Okay, you're live. We're ready to start? We're ready. All right. Good morning, everybody. I would like to call to order the City of Lake Worth Beach Code Enforcement Special Magistrate Hearing for Thursday, April 29th, 2021. My name is Keith Davis. I am the Special Magistrate appointed by the city to preside over today's agenda. Um, as we've done the last few months with uh, COVID considerations, so I guess we'll be bringing in uh, the respondents who appeared one at a time. Um, will we also be swearing in uh, the staff individually as they come through? Yes. Okay, so we don't have any, anyone to swear in at the moment. Um, for those of you in the room, if you do have cell phones, please silence them uh, so they don't interrupt our proceedings and that'll be greatly appreciated. Um, do you want to swear out the people in here that are in the room or do you yeah if we have if we have staff in the room who can be sworn let's go ahead and and uh, take care of that i guess we have a couple of folks here so let's go ahead and swear them in uh if you'll stand and raise your right hands thank you do each of you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony today will be the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth yes I do. thank you very much um since we're going to be swearing in other folks if you can just remind me if that you've been sworn already, so I don't have to uh, duplicate that effort. Um, unless there's anything else, why don't we go ahead and get started um, in, in, go, order, in whatever order the city uh, uh, prefers. We're going to go to page nine, item 24, case number 19-4, for a status hearing and a public request for fine challenge. Property address is 1104 North Dixie Highway. Um, case name is 1104 North Dixie LLC. Of the parties, um, Your Honor, the parties have agreed to continue uh, this matter uh, for 120 days. I see a note on my agenda, city requesting to be continued to August 26th. Um, let me just go ahead and for the record, let me get uh, who's here on this matter. Lisa Clough, City of Church. And you're here on behalf of the respondent. Correct. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, and you're in agreement with continuing this matter to the August 26th agenda. All right. And the city's in favor of that as well. Then um, that request is granted. This matter will be uh, rescheduled uh, for August 26th. Um, since the respondent's representative is present, I, my, my preference would be that the city does not have to resend notice that you're on notice that August 26th will be the next hearing. Yeah. Okay, you agree with that? Yeah. Thank you very much. Then, um, okay, uh, we'll sign uh, whatever order it needs to be signed to memorialize that. Thank you very much. Okay, next we're going to go to page 22, item number 59, case number 21-574, property address is 1776 Lake Worth Road, property owner is 1776 Liberty House, LLC, Nicole Del Rossi, uh, Palm Beach County Fire Inspector. Just took me a minute to get to the pages, item 59. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Have any other folks that need to be sworn in for this agenda item or you guys, I think everybody was in the room. Yes. All right. Yeah, he was oh. uh, Sir, do you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony today will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Go ahead and tell me your, your name and who you're here for. Andrew Demers, uh, I was the recipient of the letter. I'm the uh, registered agent for the company. Okay. 1776. All right. Um, so the way we'll proceed, I'm going to hear from the city first, uh, get testimony. Uh, there may be photograph or documentary evidence on the matter as well. You'll have an opportunity to see all that once the city has concluded its presentation. I'll come back to you and you'll have an opportunity to either ask questions and or tell me additional uh, information about the case at that time. All right. Thank you. Uh, city can proceed uh, when it's ready. Nicole Del Rossi, Palm Beach County Fire Rescue. On October 28, 2020, I was asked to do the property to complete an inspection. There was a nursing school there, and they needed the inspection completed for their state licensing. And at that time is when I did the initial inspection. Um, walking through there, I found um, many issues 
And as I was walking through, I noticed there were certain areas that should have had exit signs and things like that. So it prompted me to pull the building file um, from Lake Worth Beach. And in that, I realized that there had been a remodel of the entire first floor with no permit. Um, layout is different, walls were added, removed, doors added, and that type of thing. Um, I was working back and forth for a while with the nursing school. They had hired um, a contractor and had said they were moving forward. Um, there's emails in there showing me back and forth with the, um, with the property and with the tenants. And all of a sudden they decided, um, I was notified by the contractor that the school was moving out and they were no longer moving forward. Um, at that time, I was still in contact with the tenant, and she had stated that she was talking to the property owner the entire time, she was trying to get contact information, couldn't receive any, um, and then um, I've sent out several notified notices, they've been returned to me, um, and then I spoke to the property, I finally got personal contact with the property owner about two and a half weeks ago, he called me when they come in and meet personally to talk about the issues and gave him the address of the office um, and he never showed. So that was the only contact I've had with him. But this, you know, this is an ongoing issue and there are other things that need to be addressed. There's some flammable storage inside there. Um, let me see, let's see, storage under the stairs, you know, things that can be taken care of a little bit faster. But the issue is the entire remodel of the first floor without any permits. And if you look through the packet, um, I actually went back to the property so they knew exactly what the issues were. I went through with the last through floor plan and um, notated in red exactly all the changes that had been made. So they knew exactly what needed to be done. But to this, from October until now, there, have, there hasn't been any progress, no permitting, no nothing. Okay. You've listed, it looks like 10 different separate violations. Um, has there been compliance on anything or is everything is still outstanding? Mm -hmm. um, what is the city's recommendation for uh, uh, relief in this case? Um, it's full of it, get a higher contractor, get the permits pulled and get everything. Um, either their options are to either return it to the way it was last approved or um, full permits and so that all the changes are reflected in the proof. And then with doing that, they should be able to clean up the rest of the issue. Can all of the violations be captured under one master permit or is there multiple permits that have to be, I'm trying to get a sense for what kind of time frame we need um, uh, in terms of getting, the, going, getting through the permitting or at least getting a permit issued. So if you could just refresh my memory, I'm on a meeting with the state as well. At the same time, there's permits needed for? Um, interior renovation, interior renovation. electrical, um, AC, and plumbing. They've One done master it. permit will cover all those issues. Okay. All right. Um, and we do have a representative from the respondent present. So let me go ahead and um, turn to you, sir, if you can, again, put your name in a, and... Uh, address on the record as well as your affiliation with the property, then you can tell me about the case. Thank you, Mr. Magistrate. Uh, Drew Demers, I'm a counsel of record for 1776, also serve as the company's registered agent. Um, I helped the, uh, the owners buy that property August of 2020. Uh, they bought the property, as Ms. Del Rossi said, with a tenant in their Capscare Nursing Academy. That tenant had been the sole tenant of the property for at least 10 years, I think it was up to almost 14 years, where they were the, the sole occupant of that building. Um, my client's an older couple from New York. They formed 1776 for purposes of purchasing, purchasing the building. The, uh, the property was generating rental income, which my client was using for their retirement. And uh, the tenant abruptly stopped paying due to COVID and probably other reasons, and then moved out without notice in February of 2021. And so um, some of the logistical issues that Ms. Del Rossi raised in terms of notices not being delivered, I think were related to the fact that the building was vacant. 
And uh, so my client spends time uh, both down here in West Palm Beach and also the permanent residence is up in New York. Uh, so what has happened since receiving the March 1st notice is uh, we've been in contact with their realtor who serves as sort of their property manager down here for the building. Uh, their realtor today indicated to me that he has a meeting with Allied Power and Lighting to uh, review the violations and get an estimate for, for our client. And so they are committed to fixing the violations. I believe, as Ms. Del Rossi said, some of the violations will be easy to fix in terms of storage of materials. Um, but we're just simply asking for an additional period of time, something like 90 days to resolve the violations. Okay. What's the city's position on the request for a 90 day time frame to bring this into compliance? I just have a question. Is Allied Power and Lighting a general contractor or is it just electrical? I'm not sure the answer to that. Um, I'll have to find out. I just want to make sure that we have the right people getting it started so that we're not wasting time. Absolutely. And I should also mention that the building is vacant. There's no one in the building since the, the tenant had moved out. Um, there's, there's no occupants in the building. So we do have a little bit of window of time here where the building is, there's no actual activity in the building. I think um, I will check on the, the general contractor issue. So for me, I would have no problem giving you 90 days as long as it stays unoccupied until uh, you brought everything into compliance. Sure, that's the uh, owner's intention as well. Okay, um, anything further from the city on this one? All right, then um, I do find proper notice in this case. Um, the, for the record, the file contains um, evidence of uh, certified mailings as well as posting. Uh, counsel for the respondent is present at today's hearing. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find that the property remains in violation as cited. I'm going to uh, accept um, the request from the respondent. I'm going to allow 90 days uh, for the property to be brought into compliance. But thereafter, I will. Uh, you know, these are some of these are, are they're all serious. Some are more serious than others. But I am going to impose daily fines of $250 per day until compliance is achieved if that 90-day time frame is not met. So the only thing I would say to that is that it looks like you're getting close to that 90 days and you need a little more time, stay in touch with the city. Um, for me, I, you know, if, if a request for additional time was brought back to me and I saw good faith progress um, and, and, and circumstances that, that were unforeseen and, uh, as we sit here today, I, I, I would consider that. Um, so I, I, will, I will leave that little nugget with you, uh, but I will sign that order. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, sir, thank you. Next, we're gonna go to page 20. Oh, I'm sorry, before. Oh, we left. Grab him. Sir? Somebody get him. Oh. I just I didn't award the administrative costs, which I, I needed to. I wanted to put that on the record. Uh, oh, he's he's back. Okay, Council. The one thing I forgot to do, um, and I want to make sure you're here. Um, since I did make a finding of violation, the city is entitled to um, an award of its administrative costs in this matter, which um, is four hundred and twenty-five dollars and twenty-nine cents. Is yes. that correct? So that will be awarded. And that'll be due um, at um, no later than the 90 day compliance deadline. Thank you. Thank you very much. You. Sorry, I forgot. Okay, next we're gonna go to page 23, item number 60, 4386. This is a status hearing for the property address of 1711 6th Avenue South. The owner is FLSHLF1RE, Officer Turek. And let me make sure we get the respondents in here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. 
morning. How are you? This morning, let me go ahead and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And do we have the respondents in the room? Yes. Good morning. All right. Um, let me go ahead and swear, swear you in as well, sir. Do you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Remind me your name and address, please. Andrew Ressler. The address of the property? Uh, that... Um, 6th Avenue South. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to hear from the city first after I've uh, heard from the heard their testimony and seen any additional evidence. I'll come back to you and um, and we'll uh, hear from you as well. OK, thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Sue Elaturi for the city of Lake Worth Beach. This uh, case is in for a status hearing. Um, the address 1711 6th Avenue South. Uh, the owners are here, correct? <laughs> and um, I just wanted to let you know, uh, Mr. Magistrate, that this was a 90-day recheck um, by your, your order. They have complied everything. And the permit that was an, a, an issue last time is in a um, approved status. And the uh, representative can tell you how far along they are with that. So the, it, they're on their way. Great. It sounds like good news. Let me, uh, yes, sir, go ahead. Um, so in terms of the original violation, we couldn't call for a use and occupancy inspection because of the open permit. Those rules have changed. So we called, we called and passed our use and occupancy. Um, we have the generator on site. We have revised the plans. Uh, I don't know if you recall, but we have to upsize the generator. We revise the plans, the plans are approved, and the um, contractor is giving me a estimated completion date. They have to order new transfer switches, okay. upsize the transfer switches. So the they're not gonna get that for another four weeks, four to six weeks, but he thinks four. And so he thinks mid to end, end of June. I would probably lean closer to the end of June. So the previous, I'm looking at the order from uh, the January 28th hearing. And I did find um, that the violations existed. Uh, I gave until April 28th to continue to reach voluntary compliance with the code sections. So it sounds like you said everything's complied now. We just It's just a matter of getting the transfer switches taken care of and then the final yeah. inspection Filing the well finishing there's still there's still work to do okay but yeah finishing the whole project getting the final but it's in the approved status it was not in approved status the last time so is your are you thinking we roll this out until the end till the you're up again in august till my august oh, you're, you're june and august right. so Yes, sir. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just, I'm just a little confused. the The open permit was an issue because we couldn't get the use and occupancy inspection. But having an open permit, it, it, uh, is that is why is that a violation? Well, let me ask the city. Uh, what position is, is this matter complied at this point, or is there? You tell me how you uh, recommend we proceed. Um, I I appreciate your offering, uh, you know, him more time for another status check. That would be okay with me, as long as it's okay with my supervisors. Um, as far as the open permit itself, it's been open since 2019. That was one of the reasons why we wanted to get it closed. Okay. Well, my previous order did not uh, did not contemplate fine assessment. It contemplated a status hearing. So, what I'm hearing is that there has been good faith effort, significant forward progress. Um, yes. 
Uh, the respondents indicating you think by the end of June, the work should all be done. That's what the contractor is telling you. All right, then. Um, I do, if I could just ask one more question, I'm sorry. I don't mean to, okay. but is there a length of time that a permit can be open without it being a problem? Like, is it? Is, is, is that is, an actual? Let's have the building official um, testify to that. Know, with the city of Lake Worth Beach building official, the permit is active 180 days from its last valid inspection for the date of issuance. Um, in, in my opinion, um, in the past, the contractor says it's going to be ready in June, I'd say August. That gives them double the time they asked for, so there's no excuse. Um, the permit itself being open and expired will create issues for them, as well as they have ACA regulations. They're supposed to have this generator in place as of 2019, because it's a nursing home facility. So they also have ACA regulations that they're dealing with. So it will be closed out one way or the other. Uh, uh, you know, if, if they say they need till June for a status hearing, why don't we give them till August? If they don't have it done by August, then um, you know it goes to fines. If, if you want to do that, or can I? All right, thank you, Mr. Engel. Go ahead. Um, the ACA concern, we were required to put in place an interim plan, which is in place, and we have an approval as deemed in compliance by ACA. We are still finishing the permanent plan. I can get I can get you that letter if you want, whatever. Yeah, that's right. um, and then in terms of the permit, it's not expired. It's just open. It's just not final. That's what I'm just not understanding. I apologize, but I've, I've, I've dealt with construction before. I've never had a code issue just because my permit's open. Like if it's expired, if there's some issue, I, I get it. But I, I thought this was all in relation to the use and occupancy inspection. Did the did you want to testify? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, Londa Robinson, City of Lake Worth Beach, Code Compliance. Yes, ma'am. Without using occupancy inspections, we've had numerous permits just lingering in the system, just open, expired. So part of the use and occupancy inspection is the permit has to be finalized and closed. But to not hold up your license. Sometimes staff allows you to move forward as long as it's not a life health safety issue, we'll allow you to move forward with obtaining your license, but you still have to finalize holding that permit. Yes. Um, it has to be fine. And part of compliance, as noted in your note, is finalizing closing your permit. Okay. So that's why. But we allow you to move forward with your licensing oh, process yeah. so as a courtesy, as a courtesy for the city. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Um, is there anything else you'd like to tell me, sir? Um, um, no, I, all right. That kind of cleared up. Anything else from the city? Yeah. I'm inclined to um, accept Mr. Engel's recommendation in this case. Um, you know, I, the, the testimony that I've heard this morning is is there has certainly been a good faith effort and forward progress. Um, why don't we set this on my you know, I'm going. We will. We will have this order um, indicate that the compliance deadline will be. Uh, let's see. My next agenda is August 26th. So let's say August 25th for compliance. Um, yes, ma'am. Can we do a few days prior? Because like the sure. So, <laughs> oh, how about Monday, the twenty third of August? Perfect. Thank you. I'm gonna I'm gonna set the compliance deadline at August twenty third. Based on what your contractor is saying, that should be plenty of time. That that takes into consideration the building officials' recommendation as well. Uh, and if this complies out, then you don't even need to. You won't even. I, I don't think you'll even need to come back. The city can comply it out, and and we don't have to to uh, see each other again under these circumstances. If it's there's still an, an issue, then you can put it on that uh, August 26th agenda. Um, and, and I, I would, um, 
way I, I want to do this is to say that compliance deadlines the 23rd. If it's not in compliance, uh, I will assess daily fines of up to $250 per day until compliance is achieved. But I don't know what that number would be. I'd want to see what's happened between now and then. Um, hopefully, uh, it won't happen at all. Um, so let's structure it that way. Excuse me, Your Honor. So if it's complied the, by the 23rd, he doesn't have to come back. I think if it complies, yeah, then we're yeah. done. We don't have to do anything. But if it's still in violation, then I'd want to see it on the 26th. Okay. So and with, the with the one. intent that I would I would be looking to assess some daily fine until compliance is achieved. I don't know what that number would be. So just put up to the 250 a day, which is the statutory maximum. So um, I previously awarded the administrative costs on this case. Um, so I think that that's all we need to do this morning. So uh, hopefully I won't see you back in August. Uh, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we're going to go to page 26 of the agenda. Item number 67, case number 20-165. Property address is 901 South G Street. Property owner is Garvey and Viola Charles, Officer Turek. Mr. Charles? No, you can, you can come up, sir. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and swear you in while you're standing up there. If you'll raise your right hand, if you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. All right. Thank you, Mr. Charles. I'm going to hear from the city first, um, and you'll have an opportunity to listen to that testimony, uh, view any documents that are on the screen. And uh, after I've uh, heard everything from the city, then I'll come back to you and you can uh, talk to me about the case as well. Okay. Thank you. Duella Turk for the city of Lake Worth Beach. The case number is 20-1635. Owner Charles Garvey and Char Charles Violin. The, uh, the property address is, excuse me, the owner's address is 17747 48th Court North in Loxahatchee, Florida. Um, the, the property location is 901 South G Street. Uh, this was originated by a complaint. The, um, there is no um, business license um, inspection as it has failed. So 1435 is not in compliance. 2-75.6 um, to replace all missing screens, repair damaged roof, 23.2-21, apply and obtain permits for the following, uh, new soffit and fascia boards and roof. Soffit in plan review and no roof permit in HTA. Please contact the building department to apply, obtain final and close all permits. The um, permit for the roof and soffit and fascia is, um, well, actually it was for the soffit and fascia, 20, the permit number is 20-2543, and it has been disapproved by the building official, Peter Ringel. The um, use and occupancy failed on 10-9-2020. Let me ask a quick clarification. When you say the permit was disapproved, does that mean no permit was issued or a permit was issued, but the inspection failed? There was no uh, permit issued because he applied for soffit and fascia repair, and the building official had determined that it um, needed a, the entire roof done. So okay. as the permit for soft and fascia was disapproved because the building official needed more okay. information. I understand. Okay. Okay. So um, the city, this was issued a formal notice on 11-13-20. Um, it was posted on 4721. Property was reinspected several times um, as recently as 41621. And uh, yesterday, the photographs that I have given you are over a period of time. And these are the photographs from uh, like two, two days ago. Um, so it is still not in compliance. My recommendation is 60 days to be um, complied by June 29th. 
2021 or a daily fine of $150 per day. Administrative costs of 425.29 to also be paid by June 29th, 2021. And the building official is also going to say a few words about the roof. All right, let me hear from uh, Mr. Engel then. So as far as the roof goes and the permitting for this particular property, he applied for a permit for soffit repair. Um, there was more work done than just the soffit repair. A roof covering was put over the entire roof without a permit, and um, it is not put on appropriately. I have had conversations with the owner, and um, no permit has been applied for in this case. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anything else from the city at this time? No. Uh, Mr. Charles, the, the file does contain a number of photographs. Uh, would you like to take a look at those? Um, and if you have any questions about the photographs, you can ask the code enforcement officer. Um, Well, everything here was already done. Give me a second. Let me show you. That's yesterday, so. Uh, first, um, she said I did not get a license. Those are my license from the city. I always pay for my license. Want to do? Uh, Ms. Robinson's going to gonna take a look at those. What is that license? Yeah, this I is a renewal notice. This is a renewal notice. Well, that's like I said, I paid my license in the same. She said I did not pay for license. I did not say that. Cool. What happened? She did me that note. This is the first sentence here, sir, that I got. That one was given to me to the house next door by one of the tenants. And you can take a look at it. Okay. Well, that was. Okay. And this is where I comply with everything. When I go over there, I make an appointment. Another inspector came in by the name of Charlie. He came in and had more stuff to it. And not only that, Charlie approved that I comply with everything. This is the first time things you want me to do. This is the second time. Mm -hmm. I tell them to Charlie, then one month later, that's uh, one of the city inspectors they call Charlie. I don't know if he me he do the inspection. Then he told me this is what I want done, what I want done, what I want done. And I get everything done and I reschedule and show up and I prove everything. Yeah. Just one second. We're the time. Okay. from the building department. So it wasn't approved. All right. So just so the record is clear, um, the documents that I've been provided um, from Mr. Charles, there is. Uh, City of Lake Worth Beach Business License 2020-2021. Um, business number 517 and 8012. There's the courtesy notice of violation for this code enforcement case, the door hanger. 
And there are two uh, use and occupancy inspection forms, one dated October 8th of 2020 and one dated October 16th of 2020. Ms. Robinson, can you um, walk me through? Um, I understand the door hanger. Um, can you tell me about the um, business license documents and the use and occupancy inspection? Because um, so, it has well because it has some handwritten notations on the side, and I'm I'm not clear if this uh, you know. Well, what, what we well, let me have Miss Robinson answer my question, and then I'll come right back to you, sir. Okay. So again, it started with the city oftentimes give courtesy door hangers just to let you know there's violations. No notice of violation is going in the mail. We're just informing you that there are violations. So she started with a courtesy door hanger. Um, the business license process is three components. It's the business tax receipt, use and occupancy registration, and use and occupancy inspection. And again, when you even if the inspection says approved, when there is a permit issue and he documented, would you read the um, notation? Need to close code case with Officer Turek and obtain a roof permit from the building department. So he documented that you needed to do that, close your case, and obtain the permit. So that's why you still have an active case open because you haven't finalized those. Oh. Go ahead, sir. You know, that you're looking at the note here and looking at the drawing, the same thing, except they put it in writing. For me to comply, we shall already comply. Now, the only issue left was she asked me right here just to get what they call a permit for because I fixed where the water was falling down on the roof and she was to fix it. I put the permit. Mr. Ringo denied the permit. Then I called him and talked to him. He said, I don't need the permit to replace. Uh, because there was like uh, a water move. He told me I don't need the permit. And this is proof of it. When I put the permit, if you want to take a look, he did not, he said, I don't need no permit just to put the move. The next day, after we go over that, and then that's when they keep telling me that I put the new roof in the house, and then I need to replace another roof. So the only problem was that we complied. I fixed my house. When she called me, she found me building my house. There was nothing wrong with the house. John, I found him working without a permit. What did you find me doing? I was building my house. You don't have to have a permit to paint the house. All right, just a minute. I'm trying to read the document you submitted. Yes, sir. If you'll just give me a moment, please, sir. Thank you. So this last series of documents is a money order receipt money order receipt these are all money order receipts um for 79 dollars and 99 cents there's a handwritten note on this uh, envelope City lost first permit with $79 money order. See copy of money. Get your money from Publix in 2nd Avenue North. Customer needs to get refund himself. Let me ask Mr. Ringel, do you, can you shed some light on, on this issue? The repairing of soffit that he did was less than 25% of the property. So he did not need a permit for repairing soft education, which is what he applied for. When I went out there to verify that he did not need a permit for that, I had observed, and I have photographs in the file, where he put a new roof covering over the entire roof without a permit. And that's why the case was not closed. Okay. So in order to get this all untangled at this point, tell me what has to be done. 
from the building department's point of view, he will need to apply for and obtain a roofing permit. Bring the roof up to code because right now, as it's installed, it is not code. The roof is not installed properly. He disagrees with me on that, and that is fine. That's his belief. But um, from my experience and my knowledge of the code, the roof is put on wrong. So he will have to rip off both roofs and start over. Okay. The existing roof and the new roof that was put on. Do you have a sense for what? Assuming um, you know good faith, forward progress, how much uh, time it would take to do what needs to be done? With the way things are right now, and as busy as things are with the economy, I would say three months would be a reasonable time to get a obtain a roof permit, perform the work, and close the permit out in three months. Okay, thank you very much. Let me come back to Mr. Charles. Um, yes, sir. Sir. He said that I put a new roof. See, my roof is a concrete roof. I mean, solid concrete. Every year, all you have to do is to seal the roof. That's what my roof is. It's a solid roof. You can step sailing on top of that roof. And I tried to explain to them, I did not put a new roof in the house. My house was completely. All I did was going to Home Depot because every year the gallon trip is getting more, they seal it, it's getting more expensive. So I went over there, they sell something over there. I explained that to them. They want my house wasn't leaking. But she said to me that he said that the roof is leaking. Then the hurricane came in. There was no leak. So I went and talked. She went the next day and talked to one of the tenants to find out if the house roof was leaking. There was no leak. Then she come back with another thing. It's like every week they keep adding more stuff to it. Finally, I went and get a company, which I want to show you, to do an inspection of the roof. Let me ask you this question. Yes, sir. There was soffit work that could be done without a permit. That's right. Okay. But then you did other work to the rest of the roof as well. Is that right? What are they doing? That was the only thing. If you look at the first permit they gave me, that's all that's supposed to be done. The roof stuff, you just they keep adding stuff. So your testimony is you didn't touch the roof anywhere except for the soffit area that did not no, require what a permit. I did with the roof is when I went to Home Depot, instead of putting the paint on it, they sell like something you can put on top of the roof. You don't have to keep painting it. It's like a lot cheaper. There's nothing wrong with it. So you applied a cut. You applied some product to the that rest is, of the roof. Yes, sir. So that was well. It's like painting. Instead of painting every every year, you see the roof is a concrete roof. Every year you have to seal it. So it was getting very expensive to keep doing that. So when I went to Home Depot, there is a company. They when I explained that to them, they said, "Well, you can put that. You don't have to keep painting it." That's what was in there. And then they complained that the roof is leaking. The roof wasn't leaking. He said, he said, she said, he said the roof, the wind gonna blow up the roof. Nothing wrong with the roof. It's been like a year. So finally, I went to another company, a private company that do roofing. And I would like you to take a look at it. The white they said there is nothing wrong with the roof. Well, whether the roof is leaking or not leaking is not um, my concern. My concern is that you did something to the roof that was beyond what that required a permit and you didn't get a permit that that's what i'm hearing from the building official well it says i don't know that was uh, there, there was a need for a permit because you to put the permit you have like, to replace the roof i did not break the roof she is over there and that's sweet every single day every wednesday when i go over there so it's not like i was hiding or anything like that the city open every day where i work i'm only off on wednesday and thursday so that's the only time that I go from my house to the to Lakewood. So she's over there every day. So it's not like you break the roof. There was a wall in the roof. You can see the roof. It takes 12 people to do that roof. Let me ask the building official. The, the Mr. Charles' description of applying a product to the roof, is that what you're talking about as well? That is exactly what I am talking about. The roof membrane that was put over the existing roof requires a permit. Okay. That, that's what I wanted to be clear. So, Mr. Charles, do you hear what the building official is saying? The building code required you to get a permit 
to apply that product and you didn't get a permit. That that's that's the issue that remains outstanding. It sounds to me like everything else has been taken care of, except for that. Well, I tried to apply it. That, if I may interrupt, yes, sir. Read the description of work on that permit. Let me see what uh, you want to show me, sir. They, when I tried to apply for the permit, they told me because I'm the owner of the house, I cannot apply. It has to be done by professional. Are, oh, you own the house, but you are renting it out. And what the state law says is that if you own a structure and you offer it for sale, rent, or lease, you do not qualify for the owner builder exemption for permits. Therefore, all work must be done by licensed contractor as required by state statute 489 103. Because I have to issue permits to licensed contractors or somebody who is exempt. So I'm familiar with the owner builder statute and I'm familiar with the fact that if you're renting it out, you can't do owner builder. But I mean, what I've been handed is a basically a blank form so with- When I did, but when I applied, I tried to apply. They call me and tell me, oh, you cannot apply because you own the house. But fact to the matter is, I did not put in new off. All I did was trying to save some money instead of painting it. And they tell that I can't do that by buying a phone, they won't put it on it. So, but you were going to do the work yourself as the owner. Well, I did not look at it as the owner. You see, but, uh, I, I'm very handy. I can tell you that. Are you a licensed contractor? No, you are. Okay. So there's the problem. To do this kind of work, the law requires a licensed contractor to get the permit. That's why the city wouldn't issue you a permit. And I understand you're trying to save money and do this yourself, but the level of work that you're trying to do yourself can't be done yourself. You have to get a permit and to do that kind of work on the kind of property that you have, the law requires that a contractor apply for the permit. I told you, if you want, I, I remove the paper. If you want, I'll well, remove the papers. I'm sure there are a variety of ways to comply. I'm not going to tell you which one to pick. What what I'm going to well, I want to let you finish with your with your testimony to me. Twenty thousand dollars to do that wood. I I don't know. I don't know what it costs. So it's not a small wood. That's what I was trying to explain to him. There's nothing wrong with wood. It's not between. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not like I was trying to do something illegal, like behind you know, the city back. I only come to the west on Wednesday and Thursday and my day off. I have no doubt that, that you had that you had nothing but good intentions here, sir. I, I I don't see that you're trying to do it, intending or trying to do anything other than do some do the work yourself and, and try and save some money. Unfortunately, um, the result was that you got caught up in in some legal issues that require building contractors to do the the work that you did. Now I'm willing to to uh, give you the time that's required to get this straightened out, whether, whether it means getting the permit and getting the inspection passed, or I don't know if the work you did can be undone or not, I, I don't know. But, um, you know, I'm willing to give you 90 days to get this straightened out. Um, so, but go ahead and finish up. After that, uh, the rest of the stuff she's talking about, all of them were done. I don't know what other stuff she want. Well, let me let me just come back to Ms. Truck. The only thing left is this this issue with the roof. Is that correct? Uh, at that time, uh, I had complied his other violations um, in anticipation of him getting the roof permit, but it's been ongoing for almost nine months and. Basically, he's refused to do the roof permit. So the pictures that I've given you are from yesterday, and it is out of compliance again. The grass, the trash and debris. He still doesn't have a license because he hasn't passed the UNO. Because he didn't get the roof permit. Okay. Okay. Anything else, sir? Fi final comments. When she's talking about the UNO. Which is uh, indoor inspection. They use an occupancy inspection done by the, in, the building inspectors. I did. I tried to apply for that permit so they can come to inspect because what happened? There was a problem in the house with one of her friends. So I decided to. They're not my friends. <laughs> okay, let's just don't go, well, let's leave it there, all right? So 
we I went and to a judge to a big the tenant out of the house during that time that I have issue with her. And the I refused the house and I tried to get a permit. One of the employees, when I put the permit, I forgot what the name said that we cannot get any, the city don't do any indoor inspection. So that means there was much I can do about it. Can I speak? Yes, Ms. Robinson, go ahead. Um, Your Honor, I'm going to say that was the at that time with COVID-19, the city was not doing any interior inspections. We were only doing exterior. That's so right. it's not that you did not need the use of exterior inspection. You still needed the exterior inspection. And from what I'm hearing, you came into compliance. But now, as of yesterday, it's out of compliance again. So our verbiage in the notice is to not only come into compliance, but to maintain the property. You, got to, you have to maintain it. You understand? Okay. okay. I'm in, in my house. That the nicest house in that block. Except is they had it dealing with the tenants. You turn around, they do whatever they want. They keep switching stuff. Right. She when she when they Charlie inspect my my house, Charlie can tell you everything was done because he will not approve it. He was there, he inspected the whole house, both apartment, as a matter of fact. Yes, sir. Anything else? Nothing, sir. All right. I would. So, Mr. Charles, you gave me uh, a number of documents. Uh, we will need, the city will need to make copies of those uh, in order for them to be part of the record. Um, in addition to the ones that I uh, originally uh, spoke about, uh, the, last, the last document is the um, permit application. Um, with the attached $74 money order. And I was looking for a date, but I don't see a date on it and a permit was never issued. So in addition to all the other documents regarding the envelope and the money order receipts and the uh, use and occupancy inspection forms, the courtesy notice and the business license forms, those will all be made part of the record. Uh, we'll need we'll need copies of those and give Mr. Charles back his his documents. But uh, here here's what I'm going to do in this case. Um, I first of all do find proper notice. Mr. Charles is present at the hearing. Um, I'm I'm not going to accept the recommendation that that was uh, put forth. I'm going to give you 90 days, which is an additional month beyond what the city had suggested. I'm going to give you until. Uh, what is that? So that's, uh, it would have been June 29th. So, so that's July. I'm going to give you until July 30th to get this everything into compliance. So if things were in compliance and fell out, you need to bring them back into compliance. You need to get this roof situation taken care of one way or the other, whether you have to get a permit or, or if you can undo the work that was done. I, I don't know what the answer is to that, but I'm what I'm telling you is you have to get the roof into compliance. Right. So um, if you need to get a permit, get a permit. And, and if um, compliance is not achieved within the 90 days, uh, I will accept the $150 per day daily fine recommendation. Uh, I will award the city's administrative costs of $425.29 for having to prosecute the case. And that will also be due by July 30th. Um, and I will sign that order. Okay. Here's the um, documents that need copied. File. Thank you. Thank you for coming in, Mr. Charles. I appreciate it. Next, we're going to go to page three, page three of the agenda, item number seven, case number 19-757. Property address is, this is a status hearing. Property address is 1803 Lake Worth Road. Property owner is Holiday Tool Mobile Home Park, Officer Hicks. Just where you in, Mr. Hicks. Oh, 
or affirm under penalties of perjury your testimony today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you, sir. You can have a seat. Um, we have uh, respondents present. Do I need to um, swear you in, whoever's going to be testifying? Uh, yes. Go ahead and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. And I know you folks have been in the room, so you should be familiar with the process. I'm going to hear from Mr. Hicks first, and then we'll come back to you um, and you can ask questions or give me additional information at that time. All right, go ahead. Okay, good morning. This is Bobby City of Lake Worth Beach. This is a status check for Holiday 2 Mobile Home Park. Um, we were here back in January. Um, the status was to have the trailers that were owned by the trailer park. Um, the minor violations complied by a certain date. And then the other status check was for the permitting issues on the trailers and cottages. Um, during my inspection, there were some trailers that have complied and there are some trailers that still have minor violations attached that have not complied. Um, I have the list if you'd like for me to read the list off to you. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, lot number 36, um, violations were tin screens on porch and missing sod. That violation on that trailer has complied. Lot 40, exposed electrical plug on the outside. Windows riveted shut. Tape holding windows down. That's still in violation. Uh, lot C is in Charlie, 02, which is their house on the property. Sod needed on the west side. That violation was complied. Mildew on steps and sections of the house. That has complied. Uh, lot number 125, garbage cans in public view, pressure wash and clean the cement pad. Uh, that was complied with. They also painted it. Uh, the porch and the steps were built on the structure that's unpermitted. Lot number 124, porch and steps built on unpermitted structure. Garbage cans are in view. Pressure wash to cement slabs between units 124 and 125. That part of the violation was complied and missing ground cover. Lot 104, garbage cans in view, missing ground cover and unpermitted structure. Lot 105, uh, I'm sorry, 105, garbage cans in view, unlicensed and inoperable vehicle, uh, parking on landscape, missing ground cover and unpermitted structure. Lot 119, garbage cans in view, missing ground cover, and unpermitted structure. Lot 106, porch and steps built on unpermitted structure, no current trailer registration attached, missing outdoor electrical cover and garbage cans in view. Lot 107, porch and steps built on unpermitted structure, uh, mildew on structure, that violation was complied, and garbage cans in view. Lot 108, porch and steps built on unpermitted structure, mildew on structure, garbage cans in view, broken window, and no current registration attached. Um, next page, lot 127, no valid registration attached to trailer, uh, driveway and sidewalk cement broken. The driveway was repaired, painted, was painted. Uh, garbage cans in view, permitted structure, missing ground cover, and unlicensed vehicle. Lot 128, broken cement slab, mildew on structure, skirting coming off, those violations were complied. Garbage cans in view, no valid trailer registration, outdoor storage, unpermitted structure. There's also vehicles parking on the landscape by the train station wall and missing ground cover by the train station wall. Yesterday during my inspection, the landscaper was out and he was placing sod in some of the areas that were not uh, complied. So at this time, I don't know what he has finished okay. from when I left. What, uh, what are we, what city's recommendation at this point? Um, 
I apologize. I have one of my inspectors going before state board for his license, and I'm trying to hear when his name comes up. So oh. I have to testify this behalf as well. As state I see. Um, so, as far as the uh, building permits go and the removal of the trailers, okay, um, there has been no activity on the unpermitted trailers on behalf of the park. Um, you know, as far as getting permits to make repairs for the stairs, the railings and stuff that were being done there, um, since they aren't permitted to be there, um, we can't really make them apply for a permit to repair a structure that shouldn't be there in the first place. So um, as far as the city's position on the, the permit it goes, um, the trailers would not be allowed to be permitted there. They applied for permits, the permits were never issued, and the trailers remain in place, which is one of the reasons why the use and occupancy inspection has not passed at this time. Okay. So your questions? So I understand that. So what, what is the recommendation the, at this point? I'm sorry. The, the remaining violations other than the permitting Elon Robinson is that for minor violations, just so 3,100, 30 days or $100 per day. Okay. All right, let me hear from uh, the respondent. Yes, Hi, sir. Yesterday we had the inspection. Uh, uh, landscaper was there. The minor violations have been corrected. Uh, the sodding has been put down. We put no parking signs next to it. It's just a, it's one of those areas where people can't be there to watch them park. Sure. Um, the landscape was over the last year, we put down 35 pallets of sod. They spent about $18,000 and travel rock and uh, paving for the area. So those issues are being taken care of as they come up. But it's 102 units from the local homes, which, you know, you go out there any day, you're going to find rubbish or trash or something. Something's going to be there. The garbage cans were delivered by the city to be used there so they could be picked up easily. The, the confines of a mobile home park doesn't allow for you to really hide the trash can. We were told to put it on one side and then put it in the front and back. There's real no, there's no front or the back of a mobile home. Um, there is a dumpster there. That dumpster is contained. It gets picked up regularly. Um, that's something that, you know, it's hard to resolve. Are we going to be required to build a structure in order to house the trash cans that are out there that we deliver by the city? Or do we just have the city remove the trash cans and we'll use the dumpster like we did before? I think it's easier for the city if they use the trash cans, but we've got to figure out some way of doing it without being in violation and not with compliance with the code. The other additional things that were found were. Uh, during yesterday's inspection, were remedied this morning. There's one was there an outlet was missing. Um, it was an outlet cover that's been replaced. I didn't forward do the pictures. Um, the other thing was a window that had broken several days ago. That's been replaced. Now, that takes care of all the small things that have been going on. And I think everybody's on the same page there. But we're not on the same page is that this use, it's a non-compliant use as a mobile home park. The city wants it gone. They want it, it's zoned for transit oriented development. They insist that you cannot keep any uh, you can't replace any other trailers. Once, you, once a mobile home is gone, you cannot put a new one. That's why they won't permit it. It's a non conforming use. The law says that my client has 
102 spaces for mobile homes. We're not enlarging, we're not reducing. The law is pretty clear on that. That if a mobile home is removed, you can replace it with another mobile home. So to deny that permit, that's the sticky wicket. And that's going to be, have to be settled somewhere else other than here. But I don't think the law is on the side of the city when it comes to using that property for what it was been used for and is an existing use. Thank you. Thank you. If it looks like I'm smiling, I have to apologize. I'm actually a magistrate in another city. We had a two day hearing on this exact issue on a mobile home park. And I'm reviewing all the documents and transcripts in that case before I haven't issued an order, but literally the exact same issue, non-conforming use. So uh, at any rate, um, Let me ask Mr. Hicks. I know it's one of the smaller issues, but the trash can issue. I, you know, I don't want us to go around in circles on that. What's the what? What's the city's position on how how they comply that? I mean, our thing is if they can put them behind the mobile home and then wheel them out. But if they're behind the mobile home, it's going to butt up to another mobile home. But the problem is they're always out either in the road, out at the curb, which their garbage day is Tuesday. So if I go out and do a violation, I'm not going to sign for a garbage can on Tuesday knowing there's a garbage can, but every single one is out at the curb every day. On that, well, and that's kind of what the comment was, that there's no, I guess there's a question of what is the back side of the mobile home. So, I mean. Well, they all have back. I don't, I don't want to get balled up on that because that's a small issue, but is there a way that you guys can get together and, and figure out what it means to comply these garbage cans? It sounds like. Right. Um, <clears throat> Yolanda Robinson, they were probably, we would probably need to get with public services to see what solution they suggest. And then we would follow up with public services, whatever they decide, we'll move forward with their decision. Okay. So if they think only dumpsters, like you propose, I mean, that'd be fine, but we just need the cold states, they have to be out of public view. And I'm not sure if there's a way for them to totally be out of public view, but it's cold safe. Because I, yeah, I don't want to get balled up in a fine situation on that. Right. That just Absolutely. seems like, because it sounds like everything, all the other small issues have been resolved. You just need to go out and inspect it okay. and verify that, which then just leaves us with the elephant in the room and the non-conforming non use and, and uh, the, the trailers. Um, so in, in terms of everything other than, um, I just want to say it correctly, the unpermitted structures, uh, I, I will, I think 30, sounds like everything's done, and, and I'll accept the 30 days for compliance. I should give everyone enough time to do the inspection and then get with um, public service, public service mm -hmm. department and, and figure out the garbage can thing. Mm -hmm. um, so 30 days to comply or the hundred dollars a day on that. But that um, and if, you're honor, if I can, there's also two one small thing. There's also an antique car there and the registration has just expired. Okay. It, like it's it's hard to even get an inspection at this point. Um, it's under cover, so it looks like it's an abandoned car. It's not, it's an antique car. Uh -huh. And the guy keeps it, it's registered, it's just delayed in the registration. It's not under cover anymore. Oh, and then we still, it's not under cover anymore. Is there, um, does the code contemplate or provide for antique vehicles that? No. <laughs> Just unlicensed. There's, two, there's actually no. two um, vehicles, that vehicle, and there's one over on unit Uh, 127 sitting on the concrete slab expired tag by months. All right. Well, they, I just need them to get that those fixed this right. month. Um, and then I don't know what we're going to do with the, the trailers and the cottages that are unpermitted. I'm There's no registrations on some of those. 
Is that a perm building permit issue or is that a different issue? A no, I can answer that. Some of the cottages, Peter, yes. do not, and uh, I think the FEMA trailer is okay, but the cottages, about half of them do not have current registrations attached. And spe yeah, speaking to Johanny, she said they've been working on trying to get them. And there's only two left. The other ones we got and both them up on the windows. Your Honor, they're it's kind of a strange situation when we're dealing with manufactured housing, which all this is, and we shouldn't be discriminated against from any other type of housing. But they're, they're registered. It's not that they're not registered. They're registered by Riverstone, which is the parent corporation. They just can't find the registration because the numbers have wore off the files. So they have to send somebody underneath to get the actual bin number, the manufacturer signal number, and send it up. And they've been doing that to try to get, get it to get the registration from the state to get a copy. So it's just a matter of getting a copy. We could probably do that within 30 days. Yeah, is there any reason that can't be done in the next month? Yeah, that could be done in 30 days to get that registration. And so other, I think that resolves everything except for the- We'll include that within the 30 day, $100 per day. And these are the same structures that don't have the permits on as well. So look, here's a question. The unpermitted structures, are they mobile homes or are they something else that, because mobile homes are not sub, well, it's, it's a the very extra, fine yeah. between a mobile home and a manufactured home. There, it, there's very little difference. The only difference between a mobile home and a manufactured home is the mobile home is red, uh, uh, regulated by the DMV. Right. The manufactured home is regulated by the Florida Building. Right. If it is a manufactured home, then there's no registration for it. That would be the difference between a mobile home. But then it has to comply with building code requirements. Correct. It would have to comply with building code. So if it's a mobile, if it's a, if it's a mo mobile home, then the issue of it being, you wouldn't have to get a building permit to bring those into compliance. Well, they need a- Oh, no, wait, you know what? Because these are exterior improvements, right? So if it's a slab or- home would need a permit for the hookup of the electric, the water, and the sewer. That's what they would need a permit for. What about these um, these um, steps that are-, that, are... That, that would be a, um, uh, uh, a repair to the mobile home which would be a level one repair as long as it's performed by a quote qualified person. And this goes to the DMV regulations of what's allowed to do. It's, it's an ordinary repair as long as they're doing it with light materials. It just needs to be done appropriately. But that's on the that's not in the Florida Building Code, that's on the DMV mobile home side. That's a very gray area. <laughs> Because the DMV doesn't come out to certify it. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of my clients is the town of Briny Breezes, which is yes. I, I, I've been struggling with this issue for two years there, and it, you're right; it, it's very difficult. And and the there the entire municipality has correct. that issue. Could you please repeat that on record? That is very difficult. It's extreme. This is this is <laughs> one of the most difficult issues that I've had to deal with in terms of in terms of residential permitting and that, and that sort of thing. Um, and Your Honor, I might add to the confusion that there are registration registrations for some of those cottages which fall into a category of, and the state really doesn't, you know, it doesn't distinguish altogether too much between the mobile homes and the manufactured home. Yeah. The, but there are registrations to the previous. Well, and so in terms of the posture of this case, there was a previous order finding violation, and then we've extended the compliance deadlines a number of times. You know, I'm happy to do this additional 30 days, but I'm not sure that gets us over the hump on the um, 
Well, or, or, or does it? I mean, if, if from what the building official is saying, these unpermitted or the porch and steps. Well, the, the, if the cottages are allowed to stay, then they would have to bring the porches and steps up to the appropriate code. The way they were put on was not appropriate. They weren't constructed right. The steps were not even. Uh, they didn't have the appropriate handrails. And uh, you were there when yeah. Oscar and I, when we went over and, and did That's that. Been but, yeah, and, and I'm sure it has been. You know, I just, you know, if we're not going to permit those structures to be there, then we're not going to bother with bringing the steps and the rails and everything into the lights. And then let me just ask Mr. Hicks. So, for example, um, I'm, I'm just pulling one out of here as an example. Lot 105 lists unpermitted structure. That That's not just us steps and porch. That's no, that's the, the whole entire, home, home. Okay, so that really gets to the issue of the uh, uh, non -conf legal non-conforming status and whether the structure can remain or not. I... I um, special yes, ma'am. If you want to decide on the time and fine. Yes. Well, I'm happy with 30 days for everything. It sounds like everything else can be taken care of based on what I've heard within the next 30 days. But on, on the issue of the non-conforming structure, um, you know, whether it's good or bad, I mean, I, as I said, I'm, I'm actually in the middle of a very similar case and the legal research has been done. I'm reviewing memorandums. I, I'm not prepared as I sit here right now to rule on that issue, but uh, I suspect I will be in the next 30 days. I beg your pardon? Mr. Hartzell, what, what's your uh, thoughts on that? I think going back in August, we did, we'll have the registrations for the other ones. And I think in the meantime, if we fly, file the declaratory uh, case against the city, we might get a judgment by August. If not, we can ask those state on this part. Okay. Well, I, I still think I'd, I'd like to see all these other small little things buttoned up in the next 30 days. Yeah, all the small little things are done, but Your Honor, it's 102 units. It's like any apartment building. Sure. It's like my house. I walk in and get destroyed. It's but we're only, we're only citing the ones that the, the park owns. We're not citing the 102 units. Yeah, he only, the, right, the right. list of them all I alone. Understand. Right. And we've had a health inspection on the garbage. So if we go through the violations that were from 2019, for the most part, they're all taken care of. The way I counted it, Mr. Hicks listed 11 units that still had outstanding violations. So that's really all I'm concerned about at this point. And that's just the ones at the, the park owners. We we're not. This has nothing to do with the individual right. owners. So the list that he that he verbalized at the beginning of his presentation. Those are the only units right. that I'm concerned about in terms of this code enforcement case. Okay, so. We'll fix everything that's on there that's already been fixed. But that's what it sounded like. You've done almost all of it. Yes, Mr. Engel. Um, there is one item. There is the open permit for the paving grading drainage on the south end for 2012 that had never been closed out. Mm -hmm. And that has not been addressed either from the use and occupancy inspection. That was the other um, item that was there in the use and occupancy report from the uh, previous hearing. But on the last hearing, he stood in the park. He stood in the park. That's why we won't be going to the park. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, there's going to be two separate hearings, one on the paving drainage, which I think we may have found the permit closeout on that. And I've done a public record. Because That's fine. Right. I yeah. can call you. And we that would be great. That's and if we can open that the window, yeah, perfect. Yes. I have no problems with Madam Chair. I attached um, also to your copy what Mr. Ringel's um, speaking about. Yes. About the um, permitting from 2012. It's also in that. Okay. Permit. All right. So here's what we're going to do we're going to um, require um, compliance with what we're calling the minor issues, which is you know, the little electric plug and the, the window issue, the, the landscaping, um, and, and I think even figuring out the garbage can situation. Um, 
the unregistered vehicles. Um, really everything other than the legal non-conforming use and the status of whether those structures can and need to be permitted. Um, so 30 days to comply with all that other stuff or daily fines of $100 per day. On the drainage permit issue, to the extent that that's part of this case, and on the overriding non-conforming issue, uh, we will address that again at the August hearing. If you file a deck action and that this matter is in circuit court and that, and that usurps my authority to do anything on that issue, so, so be it. Um, we'll deal with that at that August date as well. But I, I suspect either way by then I'll be in a position to have an opinion on, on that issue. Uh, so does everybody understand kind of where we're going with this one? Yes, but I'm also going to, for the permits, um, August 26th, are we gonna also do the uh, 1435, which is the use and occupancy inspection since they're kind of tied together because they're not gonna pass and they're yes. not gonna pass the inspection. Yes, that makes sense because they can't. that can't happen until everything is finished. So they would need to call in another inspection with use and occupancy. Okay. Would that be in August? That's what, That's what I'm saying. We'll look at that as well. As I, I, even if you filed your deck action, I, I can't imagine that's going to be resolved uh, by then. The courts aren't moving anywhere near that fast right now. But um, so they would need to pass their use and occupancy before the August, is what you're saying? I'm not sure that's possible, is what I'm right. saying. Because the other issue is not going to be resolved. That's why I said we'll put that on for this. For the my best for best case scenario, it right. seems to me, is that I'll be in a position to make a dis enter an order on whether that's in compliance legally or not. But if you file a uh, court proceeding, that that may that may put a pause on my ability to do anything. So. Okay, um, is there any questions? This is a really complicated one, but I appreciate everybody's input. And um, she raises an excellent point. Since there's no use of occupancy, if there's anything that requires a permit, would it be able to pull the permits in order to? the improvements to get our use of occupancy. It seemed to me like the only things that would require a permit are tied to the legal non-conforming use issue. So if it's if it's tied to that, it, you know, if it was the, my understanding was even the uh, porch and step issue didn't need a building permit. It just needed the appropriately qualified person to, is that right, Mr. Engel? It's for access into and out of the uh, trailer. Uh, normally, they're pre manufactured steps. If they do something that is a site built element, um, I, I would have to review that and see if it would require a permit or not. Um, you know, because again, most of the manufactured homes, they just have those fiberglass steps they put up at the door, it's pre assembled listed thing. If you're going to site build something. Um... Mr. Hicks, do you remember are these site built or were they, they pre-built? They're site built. Okay. They're site built. So they wouldn't need permits for that. Once the issue of whether they can remain there or not stands, then we can go forward and address the permitting. And All right. Well, then I think we have to tie that issue to this outstanding non-conforming yeah. use issue as well. It should, it should be tied with it, in my opinion. Yeah, actually, that was, what she's talking about is, and not to throw like another giant curveball in it, they want to put up a fence around the park. The fence and, around the park is right now being held up because they need a site plan amendment, I believe. We were working with Alexis and Aaron Sita on that. Okay. That would be, um, and if you want to have a further discussion about it, I would be happy to meet with okay. you so we don't take up any more of the magistrate's yeah. time. Yeah, I don't think that's part of my code enforcement sure. case. So. Okay. Use an occupancy, getting a permit. Uh, sure, sure. Yeah, if, if, as far as 
Permits will be issued for the park as long as it's not associated with something that isn't there, um, you know, it, that's not legal and it's not conforming. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming in. Nice seeing you again. And uh, we will get this one resolved one of these days. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, next we're going to go to page four of the agenda, item number nine, case number 20-1352. Property address is 1833 Ramsey Drive. Property owner is Earl M. Fields, Officer Hicks. And I'm sorry, tell me which agenda item I was yes, writing. Uh, item number nine, nine, page four. Got it. The good news is I guarantee your case will not be as complicated. I don't know anything about it. But I it's that complicated. <laughs> um, sir, have you been sworn in? No, but I haven't placed you under oath. Do you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear that my testimony will be the truth. Thank you, sir. You can have a seat. You kind of been in the room for a little bit, so I think you understand the process. I'll hear from Mr. Hicks, and then we'll be right back to you. Go ahead. Uh, Bobby Hicks, City of Lake Worth Beach Code Compliance, case number 20-1352. Owner is Earl M. Fields. Property location is 1833 Ramsey Drive. The violations uh, that were cited were 12-17, remove garbage cans from view. Section 12-18, remove all garbage, trash, and debris from property. Section 15-39, remove all unlicensed inoperable vehicles. Section 2-75.9, cut and trim all landscaping, to include bushes, trees, grass, weeds, hedges, et cetera. Uh, landscape must be maintained in accordance with the city of Lake Worth Beach. Um, also, all other lots not covered by driveways and structures shall be planted with the living ground cover. Um, property needs sod in the rear yard to cover all sand areas. Um, sections 23.4-11, parking, storing, keeping motor vehicles, and boats and trailers and resident view. Um, these vehicles must be screened behind the front building line. That would be all boats, trailers, RVs, et cetera. Um, 23.4-10, parking is prohibited on uh, grass, lawns, and landscaped areas. 22-75.6.2, uh, remove all mildew and peeling paint from structure and paint as needed. Uh, we issued a formal notice of violation by certified mail on 316 of 2021. The certified mail was received and signed back and returned back to the city of Lake on three. I got the date wrong. It might be in the file. I must have a misprint. You want to look at the uh, violation certified mail was mailed out on February 25th of 2021, and the certified mail was received on March 1st of 2021. Property was re-inspected on June 8th, July 9th, August 11th, September 4th of 2020, January 14th, and April 27th of 2021, and found to be in non-compliance. Photographs have been taken of all the violations and added to the file for review. Um, I did not have personal contact until uh, the 27th with the brother. Uh, recommendation time to come into compliance is June 1st or fines of $75 per day, plus the administrative cost of $425.29, also to be paid by June 1st of 2021. All right, thank you, Mr. Hicks. Uh, Mr. Fields, the city's file contains some photographs. I don't know if you want to take a look at those. No, it's pretty bad. Okay. Um, I'm not in compliance. Uh, well, you're up, so go ahead and. Uh, just going to get an explanation. Um, COVID hit. I had to quit my job because my father had uh, dementia. And in order for me to keep him healthy as we could, I had to stay home. The only time I left the house was twice a month to go grocery shopping. And that went on for a year until he passed away, a month and a half ago. 
and I'm just now back at work and I'm trying to pay my bills and his bills since he's not here. And I've got no excuses. I haven't, I've been tired. I haven't been able to do anything. But now I'm just barely getting my head above water. And I want my house to be nice and I want you guys to be proud of my house. I got a place to put my garbage cans, but sometimes they don't go there. That seems like a sticky wicket for everybody because all of my neighbors, every other one, have a place to put it, but they always put them on the side of the house because they don't want to stroll them back. But if I need to scale a little more time, I will promise that I will comply. But this whole year, the worst year of my life. In a hard year, I'm very sorry uh, for your loss. Um, how much time do you think you would need to, to bring this? A couple of months. Okay. Uh, what says the city? Ms. Robinson, did you want to um, uh, chime in? There's a, there's a lot of work. There's a lot of work that needs. 90 days or $50 per day. Do you think you can get this uh, brought back around into compliance in the next three months? Absolutely, because I've got stuff that's going out right away. I've got the trailer. See, I had to pull everything out of storage because we had no money and I didn't want to lose it. So I've got it on a trailer in my driveway, which I know it doesn't look good. I mean, it looks like a rotten banana, but that's going to be going out within a week or two. That's going to be gone. And as far as the house and everything, I mean, I'm going to try to get a shed. I don't know how, I don't know how difficult it is to get a permit to put a shed in, but I'm looking for a used shed, you know? And then I was thinking if I can put a fence around my backyard, do I have to sod my backyard if I put a fence around it? Because I'm trying not to sod, because sod costs money because of the water. You know, water, 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 water. I mean, there isn't any zero escape or anything that I could do in my front yard that'll cut down on the amount of, you know, sod that I have to put in, because I don't even have money for sod. Because right now, I'm just barely making it. I mean, the house is kind of in limbo right now. I don't even know if I'm going to be here. Well, I know you have a vehicle on the side of the yard um, that's stripped. That's my Nova. Yeah. I mean, I was told that as long as I had a cover on it and it was beside the house and it was stuck by view from the road that I could keep it there. But I know that the car cover has come yeah. apart. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not pretty either. I mean, it'd have to be inside of an enclosed structure, which I know you have a garage, but I don't know if it's inside yeah, the garage. There's no, yeah, there's no way for me to, to do that. Now, if I put a fence around my backyard, can I keep my Nova in my backyard? I mean, it's not within view of the road. I know my brother said that it was all curb appeal, which I understand. You know, I just, I just haven't, you know, when I come home from work, working nine, 10 hours, and I'm working six days a week, I don't feel like doing anything, but taking a shower, even going to bed. And not to mention there's an empty chair by my father. Because we lived together. We lived together for 20 years. So I know you guys have a job. And I hated, I hated to do this, you know, but stuff has to be done. Well, I think you can see the city's willingness uh, to work with you. And I, I see that uh, I, I hear that you're sincere and your desire to, to bring this back around into compliance. So I'm happy to give you the three months. Um, I really appreciate and and um, I, sus I, I, say, I suspect there may be someone he I don't know if there's a. I'm giving him a card. That's what so I that, thought. Uh, we can get you in touch with David McGrew, and maybe he can help you figure out the landscape issue. Okay. Um, we have various people in the department who can help. That's, they that's mine. Here. That's oh, my I'm card. Okay. But that really, um, Mr. Fields, that's the key. Stay in touch. Keep the communication lines open. And, um, you know, don't make assumptions. Oh, if you have a question, you call them and ask. Right. So. This is my okay. You know. All right. Well, I, I again, I appreciate you being here and um, sharing your situation. Um, I so I do find proper notice. Mr. Fields is present. The city has proper notice documentation in its file. I do find that the property remains in violation as cited. I'm, I'm going to allow the 90 days um, to bring the property into compliance, and that would be um, what is that? Are there, are there any fines on the house already? Not because of this case. I don't know if there's a history or not, but um, just the administrative, just the administrative cost. And what's that? The four twenty-five twenty-nine. Let's see. Today's violations before they weren't completed. It's administrative costs for the hearing. That's for this case. 
to this case. So here's the way, here's what's the order that I'm gonna sign here. Let me tell you what it's gonna say. So today's uh, April 29th. So 90 days is, uh, we're gonna, I, I think I did July 30th for the last one. So we'll, that's, that's, that's Friday, it's the end of the month. We'll say July 30th for compliance. Uh, after that, there would be daily fines of $50 per day for each day it remains in violation. Um, the law uh, allows the city to recover administ the administrative costs for bringing this hearing that we're sitting in today. And the cost of that is $425.29. So uh, that is awarded to the city. And that's payable by the July 30th deadline. Um, so that would be, but it's not a lien at this point. It's going to be in the order that I signed. I now, if it wasn't paid, the city could record that in the public records and it could become a lien. Um, so, so as long as the July 30th, as long as you're in compliance by then, the only thing you'd have to pay is the 425 and 29 cents and, and then we'll be done. It's understandable. I mean, I, you know. All right, so that's the order that I will sign. You'll get a copy of that order. Uh, and as I said, I urge you to stay in touch uh, with Ms. Robinson's department and um, and I uh, do wish you the best. Okay, thank you very much. One day at a time. Yes, indeed. If I do put a fence around my backyard, can I put my nose in the backyard? Is that a view? I, I don't know. That would be a question you can discuss offline. Okay. I'm with the city. I don't know the answer to that as I sit here. All right, Mr. Davis, we are done with all the respondents that have signed in. Did you need to take a break or you want to move forward? Um, actually, if I could have five minutes, that would be wonderful. Perfect. So it's like uh, 1042. Let's try and be back uh, by uh, 1050. Perfect. Go off the record.
Okay, we're live. Okay, let's uh, go back on the record. It's 1048 and- um, We're gonna to go to page one, item number one, case number 07-2187. This is a public request for a lien reduction. Property address is 124 Ocean Breeze. Case name was Elizabeth Schumacher Buyer. New owner is M. Jaw Homes, LLC, code manager Robinson. This is a stipulated agreement for a lien reduction. Um, with this property, the city received surplus funds from a tax deed sale of the property. Um, and those funds were applied to the reduction. Um, the city has calculated the available reduction for $30,322.80, which is 300% of the current property value, less expenses. Um, the city will recommend the special magistrate that recommend to the special magistrate that an order be entered, reducing the lien to $30,322.80. And the owner agrees to make payment by August 1st, 2021. Okay, and so, oh, there we go. So I have the signature page. Yeah. <laughs> As the top page, this appears to be in proper order. Uh, I will uh, ratify and approve that stipulated agreement for lien reduction. Thank you. Yes. Next, we're going to page 28, the very last page. Item number 74, case number 20-603. Property address is 1131 South L Street. Property owner is Mezusa LLC. They've entered into a stipulated agreement and code manager Robinson. The owner has entered into a stipulated agreement. Um, the owner agrees to pay. The owner is granted until July 29th, 2021. If not, the owner agrees to pay $150 per day until the property is in compliance. I have the uh, stipulated agreement. It appears to be in proper form. Uh, it is uh, ratified and approved. Thank you. Next is item 75, case number 20-1398. Property address is 902 South L Street. Property owner is Harbor Michael V Estates, LLC. Code manager Robinson. Yolanda Robinson, City of Lake Worth Beach Code Compliance. Case number 20-1398. Um, the code violations found at the property are LWCO 1432, LWCO 1435, both of which are for a business license and a use and occupancy inspection. LWCO 2-75.6.2, uh, Windows Egress, that violation was resolved because the city is not <clears throat> currently performing any access to the interior, so we're not doing any interior inspection, so we resolved it. Okay. Um, the property was reinspected on January 13, 2021, and found to be in noncompliance. A formal notice of hearing was issued on October 6, 2020. Um, the certified mail was returned, but the property was posted on 4 6, 2021. Um, compliance extensions have been given since February 25th until yesterday. Property was reinspected on, on April 27th, found to be in noncompliance. Photographs are have been taken, no contact with the owner. The city is recommending a compliance date of June 1st, 2021, or fines of $50 per day. What's holding up the um, the, the license and, and um, approvals? They have not applied. Oh, I'll hold it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, uh, I do find proper notice in this case, even though the respondent is not present. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation of city code sections 1432 and 1435. I'll accept the city's recommendation, allow compliance uh, no later than June 1st of 2021. Thereafter, daily fines of $50 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. I'll award the city's administrative costs of $425.29, also payable no later than June 1st. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Suella. We're going to go back to page one.
Page one, item number two, case number 18-5828. It's a public request for a lien reduction. Property address is 646 Latona Avenue. Property owner is Janez Investment, LLC. Officer Turek, and they've entered into a stipulated agreement. And Officer Turek was sworn in already. So. This is the Latona, 646 Latona. Okay. My two steps are yes, right there. 646 Latona. Sue Elitary for the City of Lake Worth. Code enforcement. Um, this is a stipulated agreement uh, for lien reduction. Um, case number 18-5828. The property address is 646 Latona Avenue. Uh, um, oh, excuse me. Um, the lien existing on the property is in, is a total of sixty eight thousand two hundred, and the agree the owner agrees to pay thirteen thousand six hundred and forty dollars to settle the the lien. Uh, he'll pay that amount by May twenty eighth, twenty twenty one. If um, the city does not receive payment, the existing lien will resort back to the sixty eight thousand two hundred dollars. I have the sign. I knew I had the oh, nice sign. sign. <laughs> I was reading from the sign. Then. Okay, the, the uh, stipulated agreement for lien reduction appears to be in proper order. I will uh, ratify and approve. Thank you. Next, we're going to go to page no. two. Page two, item number four, case number 09-133. This is a public request for a lien reduction. The property address is 1408 South Sea Terrace. Name was Eduardo Miralorn. The new owner is Leonardo J. Rivera, Officer Turek, and they've entered into a stipulated agreement. Property address 1408 South Sea Terrace. The uh Lien existing on the property is a total of $423,900. The owner agrees to pay $12,001 to settle the lien. The $12,001 will be paid by 52821. If the city does not receive payment, the original lien amount of $423,900 shall be reinstated. Thank you. I have reviewed the stipulated agreement for lien reduction. It appears to be in proper form. It is ratified and approved. Was the 200% rule used on this? Excuse me? Was the 200% rule used on this? The, how you came up with the lien with the reduction amount? Um, yes. So you need to put that on record because okay. otherwise we're going under the um, ordinance of 10%. Okay. So this is... Um, this, we use the 200% rule on this particular property. Did you need me to state anything else? No, I just wanted to make sure that was okay. on record since it was under the normal or under what our ordinance allows that we use the formula that is in the ordinance. Okay. I just like, since we don't have the public here, I'd yes, like for them to understood. know that. Okay, we are going to go to page 23, item number 61, case number 20-371, property address is 915 South F Street. Property owner is Kareem Sheldon and Associates, Officer Turek. Okay, this um, uh, property was assigned to me on 11-10-20, found new owner on the property appraiser, um, and the attached violations include 1217 um, storage and accumulation. The trash cans uh, cannot be seen from the street. They need to remove them from public view. Use an occupancy certificate, 1435. They uh, have general requirements, 2-75.6.2. Pressure wash driveway, pressure wash and paint home. Remove all trash, junk and debris from entire property. Remove illegal structure in rear yard. Replace all screens in windows that are missing or damaged. Landscaping 2-75.9, 
Place sod in dirt area of lawn. Restore lawn to a healthy growing condition. Um, areas free of trash and debris, 12-18. Remove all trash from around the property. I believe 6.6-5 6 is still on the uh, thing, but it is complied. And fire safety requirements, 2-75.6.6. Remove all wood shutters from all windows. The um, certified mail here was received September, February 25th, 2021. I'm uh, asking for this to be in compliance within 60 days, which the date is June 29th, 21, for a fine of $150 per day and to be paid within the same 60 days, June 29th. So it was chickens, huh? Yeah, there were. <laughs> the all chickens right. are gone. So are the people. Good. Oh, oh is it, it's uh, it's empty at the empty. moment. Empty. All right. You saw the. I do. Yeah, yeah. I do find proper notice in this case, even though the respondent is not present. Uh, I find the property remains in violation as cited, except for City Code Section Six Five, which has complied. Uh, I will accept the city's recommendation, allow uh, the remaining violations until June 29th of 2021 to be brought into compliance. Thereafter, daily fines of $150 per day will be assessed. Until compliance is achieved, the city's awarded administrative costs of $425.29, also payable no later than June 29th. Okay, next we're going to go to page 24, item number 62, case number 20-1084. The address is 706 South H Street. Property owner is Dixie Capital Partners, LLC. Officer Turk. Okay. Um, the violations in this case um, are storage and accumulation, 12-17, uh, store the, the trash cans out of public view. 1218, remove all tra trash, junk, and debris from property. 1432 is to um, obtain the Lake Worth business license. 1435, up, uh, obtain, the, uh, obtain and pass the use and occupancy inspection. 1539, to remove abandoned property, inoperable vehicles from property. 2-75.62, repair all rotten wood on structure with permit, pressure clean and paint structure. 2-75.9, landscaping, cut and trim all landscaping, remove carpet from yard, cut, um, add, add living ground cover um, to the entire property. Building permit 23.2-21, apply, obtain, and close permit for rotten wood repair on entire structure, doors, windows, frames, fascia boards, and any other location of rotten wood. Apply, obtain, and close permit for a new hot water heater installed. 23.4-19 is outdoor storage, there to remove all outdoor storage. No personal items allowed on exterior to include furniture, shoes, buckets, etc. And off street parking 23.4.10. They need to remove all vehicles from the lawn. This is, um, I'm uh, the city is requesting um, this to be in compliance by June 29th, 2021, or a fine of $150 per day to also have the admin fee paid of 425.29 by June 29th. Thank you, I do find proper notice in this case, even though the respondent is not present. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find property remains in violation as cited. I'll accept the city's recommendation allow until June 29th, 2021 for the violations to be complied. Thereafter, daily fines of $150 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. City's awarded administrative costs of $425.29, also payable no later than June 29th. Thank you. Yeah. Next is item 63, case number 20-1085. Property address is 710 South H Street. Property owner is Dixie Capital Partners, LLC. Officer Turek. Okay, location 710 South H Street. The attached violations are... Uh, 12-17, store trash cans out of public view. 12-18, remove all trash, junk, and debris from entire property. 
1432, applying a chain of like worth business license. 14-35, to um, schedule and pass the use and occupancy inspection. 2-75.6.2, pressure clean and paint structure, porch, railing, and driveway. 2-75.9, landscaping. Um, cut all... Um, uh, trim all landscaping to include the bushes, trees, grass, weeds, hedges, etc. It must be maintained at all times. Add living ground cover or sod. Um, then we have uh, the building permit 23.2-21. Apply and obtain permits for AC and hot water heater by contacting the building department. 23.4-19 outdoor storage. Remove all outdoor storage. Uh, 23.5-1, remove all strings of lights from structure. Oh, um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I would like this to be um, complied by June 29th, 2021, or a fine of $150 per day, and the admin fee of 425.29 to be paid by June 29th as well. 2021. Okay. All right. Thank you. It looks like uh, the file contains proof of uh, certified mail service. I do find proper notice in this case. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation as cited. Uh, I will accept the city's recommendation and uh, require compliance no later than June 29th of 2021. Thereafter, daily fines of $150. Per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. The city is awarded administrative costs of $425.29 to be paid no later than the June 29th compliance deadline. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go to page 60, uh, 65, 25. Um, case number 60, or item number 20-1401 is complied. Item number 65, case number 20-1615, property address of 1015 South G Street, property owner of Juan C. Menta, Officer Turek. 1015 South G Street. Uh, violations are 12-18, trash and debris. 2-7511, uh, property owner needs to apply for the vacant registry. 2-75.9, landscaping. The uh, property owner needs to uh, keep his property cut and cleared. I uh, just want to put on the record, there have been four previous cut and clear cases that the city has, has cut. This is a regular code case. These photos are the most recent from 427. Okay. And it's still out of compliance. I'm asking for um, the uh, recommendation of time in this case would be five days to cut and clear it, remove the trash and debris and um, register for vacant registry that is on the date of 5 4 21 or a fine of $100 per day and I'm giving owner five days to um, pay the 429 2529. All right, thank you. Um, city uh, has proper notice with the posting and the return certified mail in the file. I will find based on the evidence and the testimony that the property remains in violation as cited. I'll accept the city's recommendation and require compliance no later than May 4th, 2021. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. The uh, city is also awarded administrative costs of $425.29, payable no later than May 4th, 2021. Next is item 66, case number 20-1626, property address of 616 South Pine Street, property owner is South Pine Street Land Trust, Florida, Florida Trust Services, LLC as trustee, Officer Turek. 616 South Pine Street, violations include 2-75.9 landscaping to keep it cut and uh, clean at all times. 2-75.11 to apply for vacant registry for this property. I gave you my, yes I did. There are, sorry. As of this morning, the property is not cut and not maintained. And uh, there has been several cut and clears on this property. So this code case to put it on record. Five days on this to be complied. 
um, which is the date of 5421, $100 per day, and the admin fee of 425.29 to be paid within the five days, 5421. All right, thank you. Um, find proper notice with the uh, posting. Um, and the return certified mail. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation as cited. I'll accept the city's recommendation require compliance no later than May 4th, 2021. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. The city's awarded administrative costs of $425.29, also payable no later than May 4th. Okay, we're going to go to page 26, item number, I'm sorry, yeah, page 26, item 68, case number 20-1911. Property address of 817 Truman Avenue. Property owners Emmett and Mary Hunter, Officer Turek. 817 Truman Avenue. The violations in this case are 15-39 in operable vehicles on vacant lot. They need to be removed and they need to stay gone. 2-75.9 landscaping. Owner needs to cut the property on a regular basis. And this also has had three previous lot clearings. Um, the uh oh. Um, the uh, recommendation of time uh, in this case would be 10 days by May 10th, 2021, or a fine of $100 per day, and the administrative costs of $425.29 to be paid within the 10 days as well. And this picture is from 426, still out of compliance. Just the 10 days, the 5 4 date. 10 days, May 10th. May 10th? May 10th, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you through here. All right, I do find proper notice. Uh, the file contains posting and return certified mail documentation. Based on the evidence and the testimony, I will find the property remains in violation as cited. I'll allow until May 10th of 2021 for the violations to be complied. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. The city is awarded administrative costs of $425.29, also payable no later than May 10th. Thank hey, you. Uh, item 69, case number 20-1939 has been rescheduled to May 27th. We're gonna go to page 27, item number 70, case number 20-1962, property address is 1517 14th Avenue South. Property owner is U.S. Bank Trust and A. Officer Turek. 1517 14 Avenue South. The violations at this location are Lake Worth um, business license 14-32 and 1435, the use and occupancy inspection. Um, they are both um, need to be complied in order to be they both need to be done in order to be complied. The landscaping, I did comply the landscaping and it is cutting the property. That was complied 330.21. This um, uh, case, I am recommending uh, 14 days for the owner to get the business license and inspection pass. 513.21 would be the date. If not done, $100 per day and the administration fee of $425.29 to be collected within the 14 days as well, the date of 513.21. Verifying the certified mail was returned in this case. You did not get you have posting. I do have posting uh, the certified mail. My paperwork is in transit still. So the certified mail has not been uh, returned to the city with proof. So we, but with the posting, you have proper notice. Yeah. Um, I will find based on the evidence and the testimony that the property remains in violation of city code sections 1432 and 1435, but has complied with 2-75.9. I'll allow uh, 14 days, which is May 13th, for the outstanding violations to be complied. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. The city is awarded administrative costs of $425.29, also payable no later than May 13th. Thank you. Item 71, case number 20-2183 has been rescheduled to May 27th. So that takes care of all of Office of Turek's cases. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank, thank you. you. See you next time. Okay.
Now we're going to go back to page three. Thank you. Item number eight, case number 20-1250, property address of 424 South K Street. Property owner is CH76 Investment, LLC, Officer Hicks. Bobby Hicks, City of Lake Fork Beach Code Compliance, case number 20-1250. Owner CH76 Investments LLC. Property location of the violations is 424 South K Street. <clears throat> property is found to be in a violation of city code sections 14 32. Contact City Lake Worth Beach to obtain a rental license for the property. Section 14 35. Please contact City Lake Worth Beach to schedule and pass a use and occupancy inspection. Section 12 18. Remove all garbage, trash, and debris from property. Section 1539, remove or get current registrations for vehicles and make operable. Um, that violation has complied. Vehicles have been removed. Section 2-75.6.2, remove all dirt and mildew from structure and repaint. Replace all missing jealousy windows. Replace all missing and broken windows. Uh, permit. 20-2007 was approved, but no windows have been installed. Uh, replace all missing window screens. Repair or replace any damaged chain link fencing. Section 2-75.6.6, lift up all storm shutters for means of egress. Section 2-75.9, cut and trim all landscaping, weeds, hedges, etc. Section 23.2-21, Please apply for, obtain, finalize, and close out permits for all work being done on the inside without permits. To achieve compliance, permits must be applied for, obtained, finalized, and closed. Section 23.4-11, parking authority and keeping vehicles, recreational vehicles, boats, and trailers. That violation has complied. The boat was removed. Section 23.4-7, Maintenance of parking lots. Uh, the directional arrows and striping must be visible. 23.6.1. All other lots not covered by driveways and structures shall be planted with <laughs> the cover. Issued a courtesy notice on 312 of 2020. The property was reinspected on 68 of 2020. Still found to be in compliance, I mean, non compliance. Issued a formal notice of violation hearing by certified mail on 11 17 of 2020. The certified mail was received on 11 21 of 2020. Uh, the property was reinspected on June 8th, July 7th, September 9th, November 10th of 2020, January 11th, February 22nd, and April 26th of 2021, and found to be in non compliance. Photographs have been taken of the property show the violations. I did have personal phone conversation with the property owner. Uh, recommendation time is June 29th of 2021 to come into compliance or fines of $150 per day plus the administrative cost of 425.29 also to be paid by June 29th, 2021. All right, it looks like you had uh, delivered certified mail. So you have proper notice in this case. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find that the property remains in violation as cited with the exception of city code sections 15-39 and 23.4-11, both of which have complied. I'll accept the city's recommendation allow uh, until June 29th of 2021 for the remaining violations to be cured. Thereafter, daily fines of $150 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. The city is also awarded administrative costs of $425.29 payable no later than June 29th. Okay, next we're going to go to page four, item number 10, case number 20-1981. Property address is 820 Cochran Drive. Property owner is Ken Florida Real Estate 3 LLC, Officer Hicks. Case number 20-1981, owner is Ken Florida Real Estate 3 LLC. Property location for the violations is 820 Cochran Drive. 
This was on a field observation and found property to be in violation of city code sections 14-32 to apply and obtain a city of Lake Worth Beach business license. Section 14-35, contact city of Lake Worth Beach and schedule and pass a use and occupancy inspection. Section 15-39, remove or get current registrations for all vehicles and make operable. Section 21-37, uh, shall be unlawful to any person to park a motor vehicle or recreational vehicle or trailer on any type in the right of way between the sidewalk and the curb in a residential district. Section 23.4-10, parking is prohibited on all uh, lawns. 23.6-1, all other lots not covered by driveways and structures shall be entitled with living ground cover. And section 23.4-19, Outdoor storage needs to be removed from the carport. Issued a formal notice of violation by for the hearing by certified mail on 814 of 2020. Certified mail was received on 117 of 2020. The property was reinspected on September 1st, October 2nd, November 3rd, December 9th of 2020, February 9th, and April 27th of 2021, and found to be in non-compliance. Photographs have been taken of to show all the violations. I did not have any contact with any property owner. Uh, city's recommendation time is June 1st of 2021 for fines of $100 per day, plus the administrative cost of $425.29, also to be paid by June 1st of 2021. All right. Uh, with the delivered certified mail, you have proper notice. Uh, based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation as cited. Accept the city's recommendation allow until June 1st of 2021 for compliance. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. The city is awarded administrative costs of $425.29, also payable by June 1st. Page five, item 11, case number 20-1982 has been rescheduled till May 27th. Item 12, case number 20-1985, property address at 1433 Hillcrest Drive. Property owner is Jeff 1 LLC, officer Hicks. Case number 20-1985, owner Jeff 1 LLC. Property location is 1433 Hillcrest Drive. This came in as a complaint. Found property to be in violation of city code sections 23.4-19. Outdoor storage need to, needs to be removed from property. Section 19-11, blocking off fencing public right of way. Um, shall be unlawful for any person to block fence or otherwise appropriate to his own use. Um, that has that violation has been complied. Section 14-32, please apply for a city of Lake Worth Beach business license. And section 15-39, remove all unlicensed inoperable vehicles from property. That violation complied. Issued a courtesy notice for the violation on 8-17 of 2020. Reinspected the property on 9-2 of 2020 and found to be in non-compliance. Issued a formal notice of violation and hearing by certified mail on 11-13 of 2020. Certified mail was received on 11-30 of 2020. Property was reinspected on September 2nd, September 8th, September 15th, September 30th, October 7th, November 6th of 2020, February 22nd and April 27th of 2021, found to be in non-compliance. Photographs have been taken of the property to show the violations. Not had any contact with the property owner. The city's recommendation time is May 14th of 2021 or pay fines of $100 per day plus the administrative cost of $425.29 to be paid by May 14, 2021. All right. With the delivered certified mail, the city has proper notice. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I'll find the property remains in violation of city code sections 1911 and 23.4-19, but complied with 14-32 and 15-39. Uh, I will uh, allow until May 14th 2021 for the outstanding violations to be cured thereafter daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. The city is also awarded administrative costs of $425.29 payable by May 14th. 
Item 13, case number 20-2052 has complied. Item number 14, case number 20-2165, property address of 1503 South Federal Highway, property owner is Lake Worth Development Trust, Officer Hicks, and they've entered into a stipulated agreement. Case number 20-2165, owner's Lake Worth Development Trust. Person signed the stipulated agreement has the authority to enter into the stipulated agreement and bind the respective parties to the terms containing herein. The violation is on the property located at 1503 South Federal Highway. The owner is granted until June 29th of 2021 to obtain compliance as specified in Exhibit A. Owner understands and agrees that he or she will not be entitled to extensions of the time corrected the violations. That if the owner does not correct the violations and bring the property into compliance within the code sections cited in Exhibit A by the date set forth, the fines of $150 a day will be assessed beginning on the date set forth by Section 3 above. All right, I do have the stipulated agreement. Uh, I've reviewed it. It appears to be in proper order. I will uh, ratify and approve. Next, we're going to go to page six, item number 15, case number 20-2171 is complied. Item number 16, case number 20-2368, property address of 825 Cochrane Drive. Property owner is Serena and Florem Dawes, Officer Hicks. Case number 20-2368, owner is Serene Dawes and Flumer Milanis, if I pronounced that correctly. Property location is 825 Cochrane Drive. It came in as a complaint following violate code sections. 2-75.6.6, to remove all boards and coverings from windows. That violation has complied. Section 2-75.9, cut and trim all overgrown landscaping and remove growth onto the right-of-way. That violation complied. Section 23.2-21, close out expired permits 14-565 and permit 14-651. Permit 651, permit has been closed. Section 23.2-21, building permit, please apply for, obtain, finalize, and close permits for cement slab, wooden shed, and privacy fence. To achieve compliance, permits must apply for, obtain, finalize, and close. Permits for the shed have been pulled, but is in plan review. Sections 2-75.6.2, remove all mildew and dirt and peeling paint from the front porch and repaint that property, I mean, I'm sorry, that um, violation has complied. Section 6-5, allowable pets remove all chickens and roosters from property, that violation complied. Sections 21-37, parking and right-of-ways and sidewalks, that violation has complied. Issued a courtesy notice of the violation on 10-15 of 2020. Reinspected the property on 11-17 of 2020 and found to be in non-compliance. Issued a formal notice of violation and hearing by certified mail on 11 17 of 2020. Certified mail was returned back to sender, posted the property in 1900 Second Avenue North on March 29th of 2021. <clears throat> property was reinspected on 11 17, 12 21 of 2020, February 22nd, and April 27th of 2021. Photographs have been taken to show all the violations. I have personal contact with the property owner. City's time recommendation time is June 1st of 2021 or fines of $100 per day, plus the administrative cost of $425.29, also to be paid by June 1st, 2021. So it's 2-75, 6.2 and 21-37-1 that remain in violation. Uh, the building permit, so 23. I thought you said that complied. Uh, well, the only part that complied. Or just part of it complied. Was the shed. 
Okay, I got uh, you. Permit has been pulled, but it's in plan review. Okay. Um, the boards have been removed. The landscaping has complied. And the chickens are gone. The chickens are gone. They're not parking on the sidewalk. So 23.2-21, 21-37-1, one, and 2-75.6.2. Well, 2137 has complied. The parking on the sidewalk. Um, my notes are getting mixed up now. Yeah, okay. Keep that complied. Um, 27562. Um, and that complied to 27562. The only thing that appears to be left is the permit. So it's just 23.2-21. Everything else complied. Correct. The 27566 complied too? There's actually two, um, 23221. There's actually two of them. One is to close out two permits. One of the permit, uh, permit number 14-651 was closed, but permit 14-565 still remains. Okay, so the only remaining violation is the uh, outstanding building permit 14-565 under code section 23.2-21. Correct, and permit 23-221 for the permits for the fencing and closing out the permit for the uh, slab. Okay. The slab wooden wooden shed and the fence. But that all falls under code section 23.2-21. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> so you have proper notice uh, with the posting and the return certified mail. Um, everything has complied based on the evidence and the testimony, except for city code section 23.2-21. I will accept the city's recommendation allow until June 1st for compliance. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. The city is also awarded administrative costs of $425.29 payable by June 1st. Next is item 17, case number 20-2542, property address of number 01, Barnett Drive, property owner is True Rudder, LLC, Officer Hicks, and I believe they've entered into a stipulated agreement. Let me just separate this real quick because yeah, sure. the check is on. The check is inside the folder. They brought it in this morning. Got it. Case number 20 2542. Property owner's true writer LLC has entered into a stipulated agreement. Now, the person signing the stipulated agreement has the authority to enter into the stipulated agreement and bind that the representative parties to the terms contained herein. The violations exist on the property at 1901 Barnett Drive. The owner was granted until 614 of 2021 to obtain compliance as specified in Exhibit A. If the owner does not correct the violation to bring the property into compliance within code section cited, a fine of $150 per day will be assessed. I have the uh, fully executed stipulated agreement as well as the check, uh, all appears to be in proper order. So that is ratified and approved. Next is page seven, item 18, case number 20-2560 has been rescheduled to the May 27th hearing. Item 19, case number 20-2590, property address of 117 South Federal Highway, property owner is Manuel Alojo Antonio, Officer Hicks. Case number 20-2590, owners Antonio Manuel Alho. Property location is 117 South Federal Highway. This came in as a complaint and found the property in violation of city code sections 12-17 to remove all trash cans and recycled containers from public view. Sections 12-18, remove all garbage, can, garbage, trash, and debris from property. Code section 14-32, Please apply for a City of Lake Worth Beach business license. Sections 14-35, uh, call and schedule and pass a use and occupancy inspection with the City of Lake Worth Beach. Section 15-39, remove or get current registration for vehicles and make operable. That violation complied. Section 2-75.6.2, remove all mildew and dirt, peeling paint from structures and repaint. Remove all mildew and dirt from shutters and repaint. Pressure wash all cement walkways. Repair all damaged awnings and shutters. Repair all damaged and rotten wood 
and metal sensing. Replace all missing gutter downspouts. Section 2-75.6.6, means of egress. Lift up all storm awnings and remove all screws from windows. Uh, emergency escape openings. They have bars on the windows. Required emergency escape and rescue openings shall be operational from the inside of the room without use of key or tools. Section 2-75.9, uh, landscaping. Cut and trim all overgrown grass, trees, weeds, hedges, etc. 23.2-21, building permit. Uh, finalize, obtain, finalize, and close out permits for chain link gates. Um, the tenant installed in the rear and replacing any damaged and rotten fencing. To achieve compliance permits must be applied for, obtained, and finalized and closed. 23.6-1, ground cover. All other lots not covered by driveways and structures should be planted with the living ground cover and other approved landscape materials. Issued formal notice of violation and hearing by certified mail on 11-18 of 2020. Certified mail was received on 11-24 of 2020. Property was reinspected on February 23rd of 2021 and April 26th of 2021 and found to be a non-compliance. Photographs have been taken of the violations and added to the file for review. Not had any contact with the property owner. City's recommendation time is June 14th of 2021 or fines of $150 per day plus the administrative cost of 425.29, also to be like in 24, 2021. All right. So June 24th or June 14th? I'm sorry, I didn't burn it so bad. Uh, June 14th. 14th. Okay. All right, I do find uh, proper notice in this case, you have delivered certified mail. Based on the evidence and the testimony, I will find the property remains in violation as cited, except for city code section 1539, which has complied. I'll accept the city's recommendation, allow the remaining violations until June 14th of 2021 to comply. Thereafter, daily fines of $150 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. The city has awarded administrative costs of $425.29, payable no later than June 14th. Item 20, case number 20-2594 has been rescheduled to May 27th. Next, we're going to go to page eight, item number 21, case number 20-2618. Property address is 907 Small Drive. Property owner is Jean Terpreece, Officer Hicks. Case number 20-2618. Owner is Jean T. Surprise. Uh, property location is 907 Small Drive. Found property to be in violation of city code sections 12-18 to remove all garbage, trash, and debris from property. Section 2-75.6.2. House numbers are not visible from the road due to overgrowth of hedges. Cut hedges so numbers are visible. Replace all missing and torn screens. Remove all dirt and mildew. Peeling paint from house and repaint house. Repair or remove or replace damaged wooden fence. Permit required if replacing. Remove all dirt and mildew from the cement wall and driveway and pressure washing by pressure washing. Uh, landscaping 2-75.9, cut and trim all overgrown grass, weeds, hedges, etc. Section 23.2-21, please apply for, obtain, and finalize closeout permits for installing closets and demolitions of, and remodeling of bathrooms and fence if installed for, I'm sorry, for fence installing new fence or panels. To achieve compliance, permits must be obtained, finalized, closed. Uh, section 23.4-19, remove all outdoor storage from front of property. Section 23.6.1, all other lots not covered by driveways and structures shall so be planted with the living ground cover or other approved landscape materials. Issued formal notice of violation hearing by certified mail on 12-2 of 2020. Certified mail received on 12-5 of 2020. Property was reinspected on 3-5 of 2021, 4 27 of 2021, and found to be a non compliant. Photographs have been taken to show the violations. I have had personal contact with the property owner. Uh, city's recommendation time, June 1st of 2021, or pay fines of $150 per day, plus the administrative cost of 425 29 
also to be paid by June 1st, 2021. Thank you. I do find proper notice uh, with the bill certified mail, even though the respondent is not present. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation as cited. I'll accept the city's recommendation, allow compliance no later than June 1st of 2021. Thereafter, daily fines of $150 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. City's awarded administrative costs of $425.29, payable no later than June 1st. Next is item 22, case number 20-2620. Property address is 1522 South End Street. Property owner is Magic Line Holdings, LLC. Officer Hicks, and they've entered into a stipulated agreement. Case number 20-2620. Magic Line Holdings, LLC. Property owner. The person signed the stipulated agreement has the authority to enter into the stipulated agreement and bind the rep representative parties to the terms contained herein. The violations exist on the property located at 1522 South End Street, Lake Worth Beach. The city is granted until June 29th of 2021 to obtain compliance as specified in Exhibit A. If the owner does not correct the violations and bring the property into compliance with the code sections in Exhibit A, a fine of $150 per day will be assessed. We have the uh, stipulated agreement. I've reviewed it. It is in proper form. It is ratified and approved. Okay, we're going to go back to page one. Item number three. No, you, you uh -oh. we're done with, with <laughs> Officer Hicks. <laughs> Okay, page one, item number three, case number 19-3418. It's a public request for a lien reduction. The property address is 130 Bryn Mawr Drive. Case name was Olivia B. Mason. The new owner is Eric Yegan. And we have Officer Thomas, and they've entered into a stipulated agreement. Okay. okay. Still need to be sworn in. Yeah. Thank you. Do you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you very much. Okay. Officer Thomas, to be a Lakewood Beach Code Compliance, case number 19 3418. Um, Olivia Mason uh, was the original owner of the property, but the new property owner is Eric. Yegan, the owner, okay. the lien existing on the property totals $4,100 and owner agrees to pay $0 to settle and release the lien. The reason why it's $0 is because he produced receipts and canceled checks that were greater than the $4,100. The city will recommend to the special magistrate that an order be entered reducing the lien to zero dollars. I have uh, the stipulated agreement for lien reduction. I've reviewed it. It's in proper form and it was approved. Thank you. Next, we're gonna to go to page nine of the agenda. Page nine, item number 23, case number 19-4164. Property address is 1402 South Federal Highway. Property owner is Sunnyside in Florida, 11 LLC, Officer Thomas. Okay. Officer Thomas, City of Lake Worth Beach, code compliance, case number 19-4164. Owner, Sunnyside in Florida. Uh, XI LLC, 1907 Northeast 2nd Avenue, or 2nd Street, Deerfield Beach, Florida, 33441. Property location is 1402 South Federal Highway. The only two outstanding violations that um, still have to be corrected are LWCO 1432 for a business license required, and LWCO 1435 for a use and occupancy inspection must obtain and pass the inspection. The violations that have been resolved or complied are LWCO 12-7 dumpster requirements, LW that has been resolved. LWCO 12-18 garbage trash and debris that has complied. 
LWCO 2-75.6.2, general requirements, pressure washing the parking area, repaint faded paint inside and around the dumpster areas and repaint any parking stripes um, and on the parking lot and repaint the structure where needed that has been complied. LWCO 2-75.9, landscaping that is complied. LWCO 23.4-7, parking lot maintenance that has been complied. LWCO 12-17, trash can and public view that has been complied. Property was inspected originally on 12-9-2019 by Inspector Cornell Nichol Nichols, a use and occupancy inspector. Issued formal notice of violation hearing on 3-24-2021. Certified mail received on 325-21 at 11.19 a.m. I also posted the property on 325-2021. Property was inspected on the following dates, 10-16-2020, 1-17-2020, 1-31-2020, 3-1-2021, 4-21-2021, and 4-28-21. Photographs are in the record showing that the, what the violations were and showing compliance. Um, I spoke with Victor, the property manager today. We also had uh, phone calls and emails back and forth. The recommended time is June, June 1st, 2021, or pay a fine of $100 per day. Administrative costs of 425.29 to be paid by June 1st, 2021. This, in this case, what, do we get certified mail? Uh, certified mail was delivered, yes, going yes. to the final March 25th, so you have proper notice. Uh, based on the testimony and the evidence, I'll find the property remains in violation of city code sections 1432 and 1435, but has complied with all other code sections cited in the notice. I will accept the city's recommendation allow until June 1st of 2021 to um, cure the violations that remain. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. The city is awarded administrative costs of $425.29, also payable no later than June 1st. Page 10, item 25, case number 20-459 has been rescheduled to the May 27th hearing. Item 26, case number 20-998 has complied. Item 27, case number 20-1541, property address is 1105 North J Street. Property owner is Bonnie F. Tanay, Officer Thomas, and they've entered into a stipulated agreement. Okay. Officer Thomas, City of Lakewood Beach Code Compliance, case number 20-1541, Bonnie F. Tanay. Uh, the violation exists at the owner's property located at 1105 North J Street, Lake Lake Beach, Florida. The owner is granted until June 23rd, 2021 to obtain compliance as specified in Exhibit A. Owner understands and agrees that she will not be entitled to an extension of time to correct the violation and agrees that she will not request same. If the owner does not correct the violations and bring the property into compliance with the code section cited in Exhibit A by the date set forth in Section 3 above, a fine of $100 per day will be assessed beginning on the date set forth in Section 3 above. The fine to be imposed will become a lien on the property where the violations exist and upon any other real or personal property of the violator owner. Okay, I have the stipulated agreement. I've reviewed it. At Appears to be proper. Uh, it is reviewed and ratified and approved. Page 11, item 28, case number 20 1542 is complied. Item 29, case number 20 1543 has been rescheduled to the 24th hearing. Page 12, item number 30, case number 20 1551, property address is 1402 North J Street. Property owner is Joan Steele, Officer Thomas, and they've entered into a stipulated agreement. Thank you. You're welcome. City of Lake Worth Beach Code Compliance, Officer Deanna Thomas, case number 20 1551, Joan Steele. The property owner is Joan Steele, uh, enters into the stipulated agreement. The owner is granted until July 28, 2021 
to obtain compliance as specified in Exhibit A, owner understands and agrees that she will not be entitled to an extension of time to correct the violations and agrees that she will not request the same. If the owner does not correct the violations and bring the property into compliance with the code section cited in Exhibit A by the date set forth in Section 3 above, a fine of $100 per day will be assessed beginning on the date set forth in Section 3 above. The fine to be imposed will become a lien on the property where the violations exist upon, in, in, upon any other real or personal property of the owner. All right, I have the stipulated agreement. I have reviewed it. It's in proper form. It is ratified and approved. Item 31, case number 20-1903 has been rescheduled to the August 26th agenda. Item 32, case number 20-1924 is complied. Page 13, item number 33, case number 20-2008. Property address is 303 Cornell Drive. Property owner is Mara L. Coons, Officer Thomas. Officer Thomas, City of Lake Worth Beach Code Compliance, case number 20-2008, Maura L. Coons, 303 Cornell Drive, Lake Worth Beach, Florida, 33460. Property location is 303 Cornell Drive, Lake Worth Beach, Florida. Um, this stemmed from a complaint. The violations are as follows, 2-75.6.2, general roof, uh, general requirements, roof and disrepair, that is still active, not in compliance. 23.2-21, building permit needed for roof repair and open building permit number 19-1100 for an AC that was installed needs a final inspection and to be closed. 2-759, uh, landscaping maintenance, keep all grass, hedges, trees trimmed, do not let them overhang onto the sidewalk. And 23.6-1, landscaping regulations make must keep maintained in a good manner and give a finished appearance and good curb appeal. Those are all outstanding. Property was inspected originally on 11-18-2020. I issued formal notice of violation hearing on 11-23-2020. The certified mail um, was not received. However, property was posted on 3-29-2021. Property was re-inspected on the following dates, 10-14-2020, 11 18 2020, 1 6 2021, 3 1 2021, and 4 28 2021, all found to be in non compliance. Photographs are in the file for your review showing all the violations. I have not had any personal contact with the owner. Recommendation time is June 28, 2021, or a fine of $100 per day with administrative costs of 4 25 29 to be paid by June 28, 2021. Okay. With the posting and the return certified mail, I find proper notice. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I find the property remains in violation as cited. I'll accept the city's recommendation, allow until June 28th of 2021 to cure the violations. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. The city is awarded administrative costs of $425.29, also payable no later than June 28th. Item 34, case number 20-2110. Property address is 2220 North Lakeside Drive. Property owner is Christina D. and Daniel A. Becker. Officer Thomas. Officer Thomas, City of Lakewood Beach Code Compliance, case number 20-2110. Daniel and Christina Baker, 2220 North Lakeside Drive, Lakewood Beach, Florida, 33460. The property location is 2220 North Lakeside Drive. This was based on a complaint. The outstanding violations that still exist are as follows. LWCO 2-75.6.2, general requirements, driveway is in disrepair. LWCO 23.2-21, building permits. There's a building permit number 19-4146 for a remodel. It needs a final inspection and to be closed. Building permit number 18-1094 uh, for a fence. That permit is still showing open and has not been closed. A building permit may be needed to repair the cracked and sunken in driveway and all permits must have a final inspection and be closed for compliance. LWCO 23.4-11, parking, storing, keeping recreational vehicles, trailers in residential districts, that has been complied. I issued a courtesy notice door hanger 
at the property on 9-9 of 2020. Property was reinspected on 10 30 2020. I issued a formal notice of violation hearing on 11 2 2020. So it was a 3 25 2021 hearing via regular and certified mail. I then issued a rescheduled notice of violation hearing on 3 22 2021 for the 4 29 hearing today via regular and certified mail. Certified mail was not received. However, property was posted on 2 25 2021 for the 3 25 hearing and then property reposted on 325-2021 for the 429 hearing. Property was reinspected on 101 10-30-2020, 10-30-2020, 11-30-2020, 2-12-2021, and photographs have been taken showing the violations. I did have personal contact with the property owner. On 317-2021, I received an email from Mr. Becker stating he would need more time. I replied back via email on 317, telling him um, we would reschedule his hearing for the 429 hearing, and that should allow him enough time. The re recommendation time is June 28, 2021, for $100 per day, with administrative costs of 425.29 to be paid by June 28, 2021. All right. Uh, with the posting and the return certified mail, the city has proper notice. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find property remains in violation. As cited, I'll accept the city's recommendation to allow until June 28th of 2021 to bring the violations into compliance. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. The city is awarded administrative costs of $425.29, payable no later than June 28th. Thank you. Item 35, case number 20-2553 has complied. We're going to go to page 14, item 36, case number 20-2570 has complied. Item 37, case number 20-2571 has complied. Item 38, case number 20-2595 has complied. Item 39, case number 20-2638 has complied. Page 15, item number 402191 is rescheduled till June 24th, and that takes care of Officer Thomas. Next. Please. Let's stay on page 15. Item number 41, case number 19-4329. Property address is 632 North Dixie Highway. Property owner is My Enterprises Inc. Officer Beware, office, uh, officer. They have entered into a stipulated agreement. Thank you. Your last name, the tongue twister. Oh, you need to be uh, sworn in, I yes. think. Were no. you sworn in? No. No. Uh, do you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, my name is Code Officer Bedlane Bowyer. The city of Lake Beach has answered to a stipulated agreement with my enterprise, Inc. The property owner... The person that signed a stipulated agreement has the authority to enter to a stipulated and bind respective parties. The violation exists on the owner's property, property located at 632 North Dixie Highway, Lake Worth Beach. The owner is granted until July 29th of 2021 to obtain compliance. Owner understands and agrees that if he, he or she will not be entitled to an extension of time to correct the violation, agrees that he or she will not request the same. The, if the owner does not correct the violations and bring the property to compliance with the code section signed Exhibit A by the city set forth in Section 3 above the fine of $100 per day will be assessed. The owner understands that the City of Lake Worth Beach Code compliance will reinspect the property to verify whether necessary work has been completed and corrected in violation Exhibit A. Thank you. I have uh, reviewed the stipulated agreement. It is in proper form. It is ratified and approved. Page 16, item 42, case number 20-071 has been rescheduled to May 27th. Item 43, case number 20-1321 is complied. Item 44, case number 20-1325 has been rescheduled to May 27th. Going to go to page 17, item 45, case number 20-1552 has been rescheduled to the June 24th hearing. 
Okay, item 46, case number 20-2055, property address is 702 North L Street, unit four. Property owner is Harry and Karen Woolen, officer Beware. They've entered into a stipulated agreement. Thank you. Lake Lakeworth and entered to a stipulated agreement. The property owner, Woolen Harry and Karen Woolen. That person signed a stipulated agreement have the authority to enter into the stipulated agreement. The violation exists at the owner's property located at 702 North L Street, Unit 4 in Lake Ruby, Florida. That the owner is granted until June 29th of 2021 to obtain a compliance, to obtain compliance as specified in Exhibit A. Owner understands that he or she will not be entitled to an extension of time to correct the violations and agree that he or she will not request the same. That if the owner does not correct the violations and bring the property into compliance with the code section cited in Exhibit A by the set date fourth and sec fourth by the set date set forth in Section Three, above a fine of seventy five dollars per day will be assessed. The owner understands that City of Lake Worth Beach Code Compliance Officer will reinspect the property to verify the to verify whether the necessary work has been completed to correct the violation in Exhibit A. Thank you. I have reviewed the stipulated agreement. It is in proper form and it is ratified and approved. Okay. Last one. We need to be sworn, in. sworn in. No, sir. Not yet. You swear or affirm under penalties of perjury your testimony today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. Starting with the lien reductions first. We're going to go to page two of the agenda. Item number five, case number 18-2624. This is a public request for a lien reduction. Property address is 921 Lake Avenue. Property owner is Lucky Feet Baking Goods Company, LLC. Officer Clinton Bush, and they've entered into a stipulated agreement. Officer Clinton Bush with the City of Lake Worth Beach Co-Compliance Division, case number 18-2624. Lucky Feet Baking Goods, LLC. We've entered into a stipulated agreement with the property owner, Merch Serger who is the owner and agent. The person executing the stipulated agreement have the authority to enter into the agreement and the property located at 921 Lake Avenue, Lake Worth, Florida. The property is otherwise free of all outstanding debts due to the city and all administrative costs. And the owner has otherwise met the requirements of sections 2-69.3, 2-69.3.1 of the city code of ordinances. The lien existing on the property totals $20,600. And the owner agrees to pay $1,310 to settle and release the liens. The owner has submitted receipts, invoices, and cancel checks. The city will recommend to the special magistrate that an order be entered reducing the lien to $1,310. And the owner agrees to make the payment by May 31st, 2021. If the special magistrate does not agree with the amount in the stipulated agreement, the case will be reset. And if the owner does not pay, that the existing lien amount of $20,600 be reinstated. Thank you. I have reviewed the stipulated agreement for lien reduction. It appears to be in proper form and is ratified and approved. Thank you, Special Yes, ma'am. Next is item six, case number 19-2078. It's a public request for a lien reduction. Property address is 701 South K Street. Property owner is Junaj Suhan Ben, Officer Clinton Bush, and they've entered into a stipulated agreement. Officer Clinton Bush with the City of Lake Worth Beach Code Compliance Division, previously sworn, case number 192078. And the property owner, Janat Schwen, Schwen, owner or agent for the property, located at 701 South K Street. The property is otherwise free of all outstanding debts due to the city and has met the requirements of sections 2-69.3 and 2-69.3.1 of the City Code of Ordinances. The lien existing on the property totals $42,825. The owner agrees to pay $4,825 to settle and release the lien. The owner has also submitted receipts, 
council checks and invoices that were considered. The city will recommend to the special magistrate that an order be entered reducing the lien to $4,835 and the owner agrees to make payment by May 31st, 2021. If the city does not receive the payment set forth, the stipulated agreement will be null and void and the existing lien amount of $42,825 will be reinstated. Okay, I have the stipulated agreement for lien reduction. It is in proper form. It is ratified and approved. Thank you, Special Master. Ma'am. Ready to hear pages. Okay. We're going to go to page 18 of the agenda. Item number 47, case number 20-453 has been rescheduled until May 27th. Item 48, case number 20-1218, property address of 1245 18th Avenue North. Property owner is Demetrius Rodriguez, Officer Clinton Bush, and they've entered into a stipulated, uh, stipulated agreement. Thank Officer you. Clinton Bush with the City of Lakewood Beach Code Compliance Division, case number 20-1218. We've entered into a stipulated agreement with Rodriguez Demetrius, property owner or agent. The person signing the stipulated agreement have the order the authority to enter into the stipulation and the violation exists at the owner's property located at 1245 18th Avenue North in Lake Worth Beach, Florida. The owner is granted until June 30th, 2021 to obtain compliance. If the owner does not correct the violations and bring the property into compliance with the code section cited, that $100 per day will be assessed beginning on the date set forth. The owner understands that the city of Lake Worth Beach co-compliance officer will re-inspect the property to verify whether the necessary work has been completed to correct the violations in Exhibit A. I notice Exhibit A of the stipulated agreement only has two code sections, but the notice had a whole bunch that then must have complied a lot of things out already. All items have been complied with the exception of to apply for and obtain a building permit and final inspection. In the general requirements section, Lake Worth Code of One is 2-75.6.2 to pressure clean paint the columns of the front of the home. Uh, the stipulated agreement is in proper form. It is ratified and approved. Thank you, Special Magistrate. Item 49, case number 20-1438 has complied. Page 19, item 50, case number 20-1554 has complied. Item 51, case number 20-1604 has been rescheduled to May 27th. Item 52, case number 20-1746 has been rescheduled, but I she, that just happened this morning. I don't have a date. Is it for the Next 30 year. days? Yes. So that would be for May 27th. And we're going to go to page 20, item 53, case number 20-1792, property address is 1311 North Dixie Highway, property owner is Hong Thong, Officer Clinton Bush. Officer Clinton Bush in the case number 20-1792, Nago Hong Thong, and the address at 1311 North Dixie Highway, which is also the mailing address. We issued a formal notice of violation, notice of hearing on November 6, 2020. The certified mail was returned and the property was posted on March 30th, 2021. The property was re-inspected on April 26th and also April 28th, 2021, found to be in non-compliance. There are photographs in the file. There are clear and accurate representation of what I witnessed. At this time, we are asking that the special magistrate um, allow until June 1st, 2021 to come into compliance or a fine of $75 per day and an administrative cost of $425.29 to be paid by June 1st, 2021 as well. The, the violations um, that exist at the property are Lake Worth Code of Ordinances 12-18, areas free of garbage, trash, and debris. Lake Worth Code of Ordinances 2-75.6.2, to um, repair and replace damaged driveway, pressure clean garage door and paint as necessary, uh, to remove items from the fence at the property and to paint the front brick wall. Lake Road Code of Ordinances 2-75.9, our landscaping to maintain the landscape. Lake Road Code of Ordinances 23.4-4C and D for the fence walls and hedges. All fences shall be uh, and symmetrical, symmetrical in appearance and performing. Liquor Code of Ordinances 2-75.6.6 of fire safety requirements. And that's means of egress to remove all boards and or shutters from the windows. Okay. 
Oops. Um, um, if I'm June 1st, 2021 or 75 hours per day. It's explain what, what I'm looking at with the fence, what the violation is. On the fence? Yeah, you had said um, something long. about it being not, not symmetrical. The finished side of all fences shall be constructed facing toward the adjacent part oh. of the street or alley. All fences shall comply with the height limitations and follow the slope of natural green and maintain and stain, maintain stain in or paint the fence. Um, this case was inherited by a previous previous code officer, and the the fullness of the fence. Those were the photos that were taken by me yesterday. Mm -hmm. The fullness of the fence, I don't believe that it meets the height limitations. If not, then there's not an actual permit that says that it does or does not. Okay, and it looks like it's unfinished also. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, was the uh, RV violation still there? No, sir. That's complied? Yes, sir. What about the abandoned property, 1539? 1539 is complied, sir. And 1432? 1432 has been complied by previous court officer. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, then with the um, return certified mail and the posting of proper notice, uh, based on the testimony and the evidence, I'll find property remains in violation of city code sections 1218, 2-75.6.2, 2-75.6.6, 2-75.9, 2 and 23.4-4C and D. The other code sections are complied. I will uh, accept the city's recommendation, allow until June 1st to comply the outstanding violations. Thereafter, daily fines of $75 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. The city is awarded administrative costs of $425.29, also payable no later than June 1st. Thank you, Special Magistrate. Yes, item, item 54, case 20-1883 is complied. Case 21, item 55, case number 20-1893 is complied. Item 50, case number 20-1952 has been rescheduled to May 27th. We're going to go to page 22. Item 57, case number 20-2119, property address is 1251 19th Avenue North. Property owner is Catherine and Mark Colombo and Catherine Sepko, Officer Clinton Bush. Officer Clinton Bush with the City of Liquid Beach Code Compliance previously sworn. Case number 22119, Catherine and Mark Colombo and Catherine Sepko. And the property located at 1251 19th Avenue North, which is also the mailing address. We issue the formal notice of violation and notice of hearing on November 23rd, 2020. The certified mail was returned on December 31st, 2020. And the property was posted on March 30th, 2021. The property was re-inspected on April 26th and also on April 28th and to be found in non-compliance. The violations that exist at the property is liquid code of ordinances 12-18, garbage, trash, and debris. Liquid code of ordinances 2-75.6.2, which is our general requirements to pressure clean the front door trim and paint if necessary. Pressure clean and wash the front steps and the walkway. Liquid code of ordinances 2-75.6.6, and that is our fire safety requirements to remove the shutters and or boards from all windows. Liquid code of ordinances 2-75.9. And that's our landscaping uh, requirements to cut mulch from all hedges, bushes, shrubs, and trees and repair, repair or replace any bare areas of side. At this time, we are asking that the special magistrate, um, we are recommending that the time be uh, to come into compliance is June 1st, 2021, or a fine of $75 per day with administrative costs of $425.29 to be paid by June 1st, 2021. Thank you. The city has proper notice with the return certified mail in the posting. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I do find the property remains in violation as cited. I will accept the city's recommendation allow until June 1st to bring the outstanding violations into compliance. After that, daily fines of $75 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. The city is awarded administrative costs of $425.29, also payable no later than June 1st. 
Next is item 58, case number 20-2625. Property address is 1749 16th Avenue North. Property owner is Goodsmere Hernandez and Lorenzo Yunel, Officer Clinton Bush. Officer Clinton Bush, City of Lifford, East Point, 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 case number CE 20-2625. Goodsmere and Yunel, Lorenzo Hernandez, 1749 16th Avenue North, which is also the mailing address. Uh, the city issued a formal notice of violation notice of hearing on December 1st, 2021 by certified mail. The certified mail was received on December 4th. The violations that still exist at the property are Lakewood Code of Ordinances 2-75.9, which is our landscaping ordinances, to cut, mow, trim all hedges, bushes, shrubs, trees, and grass, and to replace any bare areas. <clears throat> we do have photographs that have been taken. This is a clear and accurate representation of what we witnessed. At this time, the city is asking um, that they come into compliance by June 1st, 2021, or a fine of $75 per day be assessed, and an administrative cost of $425.29 to be paid by June 1st, 2021. What um, is the 9-2.1 violation, administrative amendments to the building code? It was, that section is a part of our uh, permitting. So if it was in old cases, that section was still cited to apply for a permit. Okay. That was compliant by the previous code officer That's for the zone. Okay. So the and what about 23.4-11? Is that complied also? The yes. RV? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, sir. So it's uh 21.21-33.3 and 2-75.9. 2-75.9 only. Oh, the prohibited parking is complied also. Yes. So the car's not in the grass anymore. Okay. okay. Okay, uh, I do find proper notice with the received certified mail. I find based on the testimony and the evidence the property remains in violation of city code section 2-75.9, but did comply with the other sections that were originally cited. I'll accept the city's recommendation to allow until June 1st of 2021 to bring the outstanding violation into compliance. Thereafter, daily fines of $75 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved and the city is awarded administrative costs of $425 and 29 cents payable no later than June 1st. Thank you, Special Manager. Yes, ma'am. Okay. We're gonna go to page 27, item number 72, case number 20-1599, property address is 717 North E Street. Property owner is Clertude Forest, Officer Clinton Bush. Officer Clinton Bush with the City of Lakewood Beach Code Compliance Division, previously sworn, case number 20-1599. Cultural Forest in the property located at 717 North East Street. Um, observe the property in violation with code sections, Lakewood Code of Ordinances 12-38 to cut mold all overgrowth, creating nuisance and blight to surrounding properties. Lakewood Code of Ordinances 2-7511, vacant property register, registry to register a property with vacant property pro tramps and pay applicable fees. Um, the property was issued a, well, the owner was issued a formal notice of violation notice of hearing on November 20th, 2020 by certified mail. The certified mail was received on November 23rd, 2020. The property was also posted on April 19th, 2021. There was some uh, dialogue with the owner. The property was reinspected on April 28th, 2021, found not to be in compliance. At this time, the city is recommending that the property come into compliance by June 1st, 2021, or a fine of $75 a day be assessed, an administrative cost of $425.29 to be paid by May June 1st, 2021. Okay, and it, uh, is it both uh, the foreclosure registration and the uh, nuisance land? Landscape. Pardon me? The nuisance? I got 12-38 and 2-75.11. Yes, Okay, uh, so you definitely have proper notice with the uh, post certified mail and the posting. Um, based on the testimony and the evidence, I do find property remains in violation as cited. I will accept the city's recommendation allow until June 1st, 2021 for the outstanding violations to be complied. Thereafter, daily fines of $75 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. The city's awarded administrative costs of $425.29, also payable no later than June 1st. Thank you, Special Manager. Item 73, case number 31 has complied, and that takes care of our agenda. All right. Is there any other business that we need to take care of today? No, sir. All right. It's uh, 12-17, and uh, we stand adjourned.